Welcome back to another session of Stardust Rhapsody. We would absolutely love it if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. Ding. And of course, while you're doing that, I'm gonna read some quotes from last month's episode. Quote number one, I felt mace so much when Chuckles cast Comprehend Languages. That is the universal <laughs> sigh of all DMs out there. <laughs> Sorry. Quote number two, you guys owe me financial compensation for this ending. <laughs> Quote number three, y'all are criminals for that episode title, I hope you know. <laughs> Quote number four, if this episode makes you cry, just tell folks you got a little sand in your eye. Oh, oh man. So, make sure you leave a comment below, and maybe next month, yours will be read. In the meantime, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member right here on YouTube. You can go check out our merch shop. You can become a patron over on Patreon to enjoy our brand new campaign called Shroud Over Salt Marsh. And you can go to thecrookedmoon.com to pre-order your copy of The Crooked Moon today. Thank you. And pilots, it is that time once again to don your sunglasses, grab your instruments, and lend your cosmic chorus to our Stardust Rhapsody. Let's jam. Some say the universe is a song. That all things are made from the same stuff as the stars. And that every life is a note in the music of existence that echoes through infinity. So when you feel insignificant and alone, just remember, we're all irreplaceable parts of that grand cosmic melody. The Stardust Rhapsody. That's it, folks. The prelims are over as racer number eight takes the checkered flag, securing his place in the Grand Prix. Entries are now closed as the most exciting race of the season dominates the skies tomorrow night here at the Prismatic Pathway. <sighs> You've dealt with prehistoric war parties, gods of time and tale, and chaos demons. Even under the circumstances, you find yourself exhaling a brief sigh of relief as you are faced with the prospect of once again normal bounty hunting. <clears throat> as you approach, you hail the pathway. They handshake your entry and your ship begins to make a slow descent to the track. We made it. Uh, I'm not really feeling up for a wacky races sort of adventure right now, guys. Are you feeling up to waffles? I think we're looking for a diner. Yeah, I could do waffles. That's <laughs> I'm with Chuckles. Everything we have is in complete disarray and ruin. But... We do have this as our only lead, right? Chances are good. We'll find Rex here. And if we can deal with him or get some more information, maybe that'll give us some leverage with the boss or somebody else. Hmm. And it'll put us one step closer to maybe where the Saurians went. I want us to stop thinking about the Saurians. 
I don't want the thoughts of dinosaurs or dandy to cross our minds again. We just need to focus on being bounty hunters, you understand? How can we forget about <clears throat> Dandy? She's our friend! I have my stay file on King Donut 64 waiting for her to be! Now I- I'm, I just don't- I- I- And Kavir! We all saw what she did to Kavir. As far as I'm concerned, that wasn't Dandy. Whatever the prophet did to her made her someone else. And like I said, we could have the full fucking force of Grom Corp or the fucking Empire. And who knows if even that would be enough to save her. If she even can be saved. Alright. And I can't torture my fucking self about past regrets. I've done that enough in my life. All right. I agree. I won't, I won't mention it again, but I'm not giving up. We See? can't give up, but I am with you. When I was just learning to speak, I watched media to try and expand my vocabulary. And I watched one video many times. I'm turning it to laugh again. <laughs> it's fine. It's close enough. The Crone Colossus. <laughs> he was a gun, but also he was his own self. That was Dandy's fate. They are not the same. Yeah. I just don't know who I'm going to drink root beer floats with. No. You know, the end in the Chrome Colossus is actually pretty dark. I remember. And, look, I'm not going to forget about the dandy we knew, okay? I'm not going to forget about her. But we need to focus on getting back to what we're fucking good at. And that's hunting bounties. Yeah. Ain't it? I would not mind losing myself in work a little right now. And so, Rex pulled the wool over our eyes. He pulled a fast one. Let's get him back. And let's fucking turn him in. Yeah. So, you know, I know that Jolly said that, like, She's the horrible elder demon, and like she wanted to do bad stuff. But I mean, like, what if we're just misinterpreting, you know, what she was? Thinking? I'm gonna turn the rhapsody around and fucking drop you back off in Cloud Hill if you fucking entertain the idea of thinking twice about her. I. We were captured by a bunch of horrific demonic corpses on Springs. <laughs> that poor llama corn. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I mean, do you? Whoa, uh... <laughs> you watch yourself, or we will drop you off, and you'll be drowning in pies before you know it. Pear pie and peach pie. <laughs> oh, boy, okay. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I mean, you think that she just be the knife guy? Chuckles! <laughs> okay! Has anyone okay. ever told you the saying, you don't stick your nose in crazy? Oh, okay. Oh, I'll call. Chuckles. Uh. Chuckles. Yeah. Take yeah. it from me. Yeah. The wrong woman will kill you. Well, obviously. Gosh, we almost all just met our makers from the wrong woman. Woo! Oh. Yeah, you're right. Right, Pike. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just feeling very conflicted now. I think I need to solve those feelings by emotionally eating with a giant, comically large tower of waffles. I need a drink. Can you give me a peach slice of... <coughs> Beats me. Probably. Mm, peach cobbler. Let's look at the map and see if there is a diner. I will lead the Rhapsody, I will, I will pilot the Rhapsody down to uh, wherever the hangar might be for visitors. 
you do so. And this uh, space station, the prismatic pathway, as you descend down and you go to enter it, you see that above ground, there is uh, what looks to be absolutely massive uh, stadium stands that extend out in kind of like a, a widened U shape. In the center, uh, a little bit of an inclined hill that comes up that people can also climb up on and watch the race as it takes place. There are two large floating uh, metal beams that extend out into space. <clears throat> and you get the sense that possibly while the race is going, these will engage to create different types of track. Uh, beneath all this is the hangar where you will enter and board the station. You pull the Rhapsody in deftly and you set down in a space where you can disembark and be greeted by those who will check you in. I'll look to Hank. Uh, all right, buddy. You start working on uh, the ship and uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep you posted. He acknowledges your command. Uh, this is the Rhapsody looking for berth and uh, one docking station. Uh, length of stay a couple days. Yeah. Can we afford to get our ship prepared? How much do we have? Not a lot. Let's let Hank work on it. And I can cover <clears throat> the rest once we're done. And maybe if we can collect the bounty, that'll uh, fill the gaps. And who knows what other work we might find while we're here. That's uh, right. These races often draw in some unsavory types. Yeah. Let's have a nice fun time to do the healthy thing and avoid processing what we've just experienced. Agreed! Agreed! <laughs> Agreed! Emotional eating and avoiding! <laughs> I walk over... <laughs> I walk over to a drawer. Yeah! I compartmentalize it. And Push our so feelings down. Yeah. is the battle cry of the crew of the Rhapsody. Oh, Emotional oh, Let's yeah. not talk about it. Now we have cigarettes and drugs. Yeah. Oh, now we're addressing it again. Escapism. Frothing mug of root beer. <laughs> Alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> Crippling depression. <laughs> this is why we choose Cheers space. Oh, this is it. This is it. Yeah. 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 The most relatable campaign somehow. No wonder it's a fan film. Watch yeah. how many cigarettes I can smoke at once. <laughs> <laughs> and when you uh. hail out Rhett requesting a uh, berth to drop the size of your ship and explore potential repairs, uh, you hear a response. Hey there, Rhapsody. Yeah, you can come on in. Uh, but dock in uh, hangar C3, and we will presently pop on in and check out what you have. <clears throat> All right, C3, roger that. You fly in and dock where directed. Uh, you may all leave or come to the hangar bay and get ready to disembark the ship if you choose to do so. Uh, if there's anything you might do before leaving, you can do now. Otherwise, the hangar bay will swing open. I would wait for the gang and be ready to depart. There's nothing I need to do before we leave. The uh, sparrows and pieces. I will see my game station, and I'll see the King Donut 64 is slotted in, and think about Dandy save file. I'll think I'll pull it out, and I'll pull out a copy of uh, my copy of Suncat 64. I'll just put it in there. I guess the silver lining is that we have the perfect number of players for Suncat 64. <laughs> Jesus. I call Peppy! <laughs> oh. <laughs> what the hell is Suncat 64? I, I, hope, that, I hope that the game yeah, will... Got maybe, it. maybe I can convince the, the rest of the guys to play when we, when we finish the up. I'm only playing if Rhett finally learns how to do a barrel roll. <laughs> Not that hard, Rhett. 
Anyway. Well, it's hard to hit Z and the C buttons at the same time. Anyway. You've got like fun. eight arms. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the most dexterous. They're good at gripping. <clears throat> uh, I do not bring the, the ether engine. It, it is remaining on its, uh, on its stand in my room. Mm-hmm. Uh, you... That's a good decision. You <laughs> wouldn't know this intrinsically... Uh, but you may have heard or been told that there is general, though you're absolutely correct, it is a bit of uh, an outlaw magnet, the prismatic pathway. However, uh, it is very, it has a simple set of rules that are very heavily enforced. No fighting at the pathway. Uh, as you go, your hangar bay drops down and <laughs> and opens. You are met uh, by an absolutely enormous uh, docking station, larger than even was on uh, Space Station 777 in the boss's quarters. Certainly not as ornate. Um, simple. Uh, metal it, it stretches out in all directions, gangplanks, you have crews of people uh, hoofing to and fro, uh, working, checking people in, repairs are going on around. This is a raceway. There are ships all over the place. There are pit crews coming and going, getting things back up and running. Uh, and you have a uh, uh, smaller, also solar elf, walks up. Uh, and comes to check you in. He wears uh, just like a like a kind of a white T-shirt with almost like a black. Uh, it looks like kind of like a blacksmithing apron on, oh. and he has uh, goggles pulled over just to the top of his forehead uh, as he walks up. <clears throat> okay, well, hey there. Let's let's take a stock of what you're what you're dropping off here. We'll just do a quick uh, inventory of any repairs you might you might need if you're if you're uh, interested in that, and uh, we can quote you a price and and go from there. Uh, well, we're gonna need five per four personal vehicles uh, repaired. Okay, uh, well, four is not too bad. We could get that up and running probably uh, about a week's time. Let's take a look at the. And he looks out uh, through the through the hangar bay of what you brought in. Uh, oh, the hangar bay. Says, uh, oh, I'm sorry. In the in the yeah yeah, yeah your hangar bay. Yeah. In the at the damages uh, and says damage. Uh, where are you all coming from? This is this is pretty rough work. You don't want to know, kid. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Well. Well, let's we'll, we'll make the rounds. I'll give you a number, and I mean, I think maybe it takes a week, best case scenario, to get this up and running. Uh, and he starts to go around the room. His, he'll start with uh, Rhett, your vehicle. Take a look, like large size vehicle, probably five thousand credits. Uh, I'll move to Chuckles' saucer, uh, medium size, not too crazy. 3,000 credits. Yeah, you don't have to worry about how it works. You just kind of need to have the form and I'll do the rest. So just, you know, it, uh, it's just, okay. We can polish it back up. Don't yeah. you worry. Yep. As long don't. as it makes a <laughs> sound as it goes, you're good. Yep. We could probably figure that one out. Exactly. Um, and he gets a Lubush's max suit. Oh, that's, not, that's not too bad. Pretty easy fix. Just a little glass here. Uh, a couple tears here and there. Uh, and then he comes to the Sparrow. Uh, and he looks at it and he starts to take notes and then as soon as he opens his mouth I'm like all right now listen I know this looks pretty bad the only person I really trust to make any changes adjustments or upgrades is this guy all right so and I start like listing off a litany of things that it's supposed to be exactly what it's supposed to look like here's where it's broken this is what's not broken that might look like it's broken you're wrong and like basically giving him the rundown because like normally I wouldn't let anybody touch the ship except for me or red yep yes sir yes sir got it got it okay okay huh okay yeah that yeah we can put that there that was weird yeah okay okay uh, and and he he takes a moment to really look at the sparrow and move around it. 
What? Wait a second. What? What do you call this ship? I call her the Sparrow. He, his mouth falls agape for just a moment, uh, chewing on a toothpick as he was walking around. The toothpick drops from his mouth as he looks at your ship. Did the sparrow? That's right. Doc! Doc, come take a look at this! He shouts out to somebody else in the hangar bay. And similarly dressed older gentleman kind of curmudgeonly comes up, uh, goggles pulled down onto his eyes, and blinking, ah, what? What is going on? <clears throat> this guy's got the sparrow. He, this is what he says at least. Well, that can't be right. I mean, that, no, that's, that's ancient. Well, I haven't been around here and well, damn near forever. It's got to be a different ship. No, he says he says it's the Sparrow. Look, look at what's requested. Well, that that can't be. And he walks up to the ship with the goggles on. He starts to kind of like twist and turn. You see him kind of zoom in and zoom out. Um, and he inspects. Unless you interrupt it all, nope. he inspects the uh, control unit. The just the controls to pilot the ship. Well, I'll be damned. It is the Sparrow. Oh, ma'am. You the original pilot? Yeah, of course. Well, damn, son. I got a poster of you on my wall back at home. I used to watch your races growing up. What? I didn't think you'd ever come back. Pipe on a poster? Well, the Sparrow is. What? What's brought you back? You came for the Grand Prix? Are you a secret mystery racer, Pike? <laughs> No. I... Why didn't you tell us? It's not like that. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard. This guy's no secret racer. The Sparrow's a household name. It's, it's... not raced on the track in, in decades, but... Trust me, Chuckles. It's all the ship. It's not me. Guys, this is way cooler than my shit back story. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Man, that's the hay thing. Would any of this be, would this be old news to me or would this be news to me? Uh, you would know that I have uh, a background in racing. You know I have uh, why I'm an ace pilot. Right. You would absolutely okay. know uh, of that. You might not know of the infamy of the Sparrow so much. Um, but whenever we would have talked about the ship, it would have been me talking up the Sparrow, not necessarily me. I see. Wow, Pike, you know, I knew you were good. I didn't think you were that good. The Whoa. Sparrow is a very special machine. You better take good care of it. Oh, gosh, sir, it's an honor to work on the Sparrow. I mean, this one will do for free. Well, uh, that's certainly not necessary. No, no, wait, wait, wait. You're, now you're talking my language. Free. For free, you think? To work, well, for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. For triple. you. <laughs> for you, oh, it's triple. Oh, yeah, to get that special one, 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 well, one, 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 is... sound when you fly, I mean, no, that no, takes no, a lot no, of engineering. Can you do that for me? <laughs> well, that's going to cost double, triple. <laughs> Uh, there's an art to discord magic, but I suppose someone like you. Real uh, Marvin the Martian looking motherfucker sort of deal, you know that what I mean? That makes me very angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly right. I know what you mean, and it's, it's going to stay in a double triple. But oh. for the Sparrow, gosh, Pike, it'd be my honor if you'd let me work on it. I appreciate it. Well, people got to know that you're back. 
Kid, go tell him. Go might, run out. Not and the, the smaller best, kid I... starts running out. All right. Um, Here we go. <laughs> uh. Well, gosh, this guy, top three racer of all time at the Prismatic Pathway. What? Top oh, three? Top three. Of all time, you think? <laughs> of all time, I say. What? Do top three racers of all time get free waffle down at the local Dexter's Dexter's Dike and 50 Street Diner? I can't think of a single chef in the Prismatic Pathway that would charge Pike for waffles. And his friends. You, it's gonna be double, triple. <laughs> oh. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, a oh. pike and anyone who walks with them. Oh. Waffles are on the house. Do you do huh. like custom detail work, like decals and such, and like? No, no, we're not gonna pay extra. It just oh, needs to be on. fixed. For Pike, if Pike's oldest clown chum chuckles. Well, describe what you want in excruciating detail. We'll see if we can't get it done. Don't say clown chum. <laughs> come here. Come here. Yeah, okay, okay. Come here, come here. Yeah. Can you look like this? I'm gonna like hold like a piece of paper with uh Oh, you are one sick puppy. You want this on your shit? <laughs> That's anatomically correct. <laughs> <laughs> I know it doesn't seem physically possible. I mean that... we can do it, sir, we can do it. <laughs> but are you Absolutely sure you want to fly around space with that thing hanging off the ship. Give me the Pixar special, my good man. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, yeah. Clearly, well, he hasn't seen women from the Pixarist system. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> fucking brilliant. You son of a bitch. <laughs> that's the one. That, can you can you do it? Have it be on the opposite side of my bumper sticker. Uh, my other ride at the llama corn. One. <laughs> yeah, the llama Thank corn you. one. I noticed yeah, that. Yeah, I just yeah. make it, give it a little bit of symmetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like that. All right. Well, uh, I'd like to supervise uh, you taking the ships out of the hangar uh, so that I can lock up appropriately. Not a problem. We can get them slipped out right now. You can lock up the ship, and uh, well, we'll get started as soon as we can. Presently, uh, <clears throat> and he'll walk around snapping, uh, snapping out at a couple people. Hey, move quick! You don't understand? This guy's got the got the sparrow. Come on, it's back. And uh, a couple other like uh, very very similarly dressed people all run up, uh, and they'll have uh, like uh, basically forklifts that'll go under the ships. Uh, and kind of lift them up with a little curved, uh, like, uh, like a hammock kind of thing. Uh, and they'll take your personal ships out into the hangar at large, uh, and drop them there. Uh, and it'll take them probably 20 minutes to get just the four ships out of the bay. Um, well, there you go. I mean, we're all out, so we can definitely get started here. We'll start with the Sparrow. I don't know how quick I can get this done. I want to give it the care that, that a ship like this deserves, but we'll work as fast as we can, sir. There's no need to rush. We're going to be here for a bit. I'll hit a few uh, buttons on my um, arm, and the hangar will go a sort of purple force field Ooh, that normally nice. kind of keeps mm. it sealed. Yeah. Uh, descends and, and shuts off the hangar. Mm. Uh, hey, buddy, uh, don't let a single soul on board, you understand? Huh? Including robots, anyone. Huh? If a fucking single thing happens or anyone tries to get on board, you let us know right away, you understand? <laughs> All right, good job. The good doc, boy. The doc will see this uh, force field come over the ship and just kind of gaze at it. Uh... Uh, extremely appreciatively of the feat of engineering it would take and recognizing the color uh, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that uh, we'll just provide whatever tools you need to work on your own ship uh, I mean plenty of uh, self modifications on mine uh, I mean do what you can get her fixed up I can handle the rest. And if a Robo Pugs shows up, you follow his orders. Well, okay. I mean, you can you can dictate a second for sure. Uh, It'll make sense when you see the Robo Pug. <laughs> okay. 
We'll, we'll listen to the orders of the robo bug. Yeah. If he were to show up. Right. Damn straight. <laughs> there we go. So you're a friend of the sparrow now. <clears throat> My dreadnought. It uh, was not special at all. I hydraulic uh, mining vessel. Uh, if it would cost less to buy a new one <laughs> than to repair it. Do that. Well, okay. We'll see what we can do to get you back up and running in, in that old uh, mining gear. Uh, I don't know that we have anything like that laying around on, on account of here is this is a racetrack and not a mining colony, but uh, we'll see what we can do to just patch it up for you. And to clarify, it's not a dreadnought. It's a excavator 9000, but it's with an X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I noticed that. Very edgy of you. Is that uh, true? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would have For now it is. Let's continue. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah, moving, moving beyond that little snafu. Uh, well, exactly oh. it. Yeah? Um, do we get like a big... Uh, are there like, like a lollipop or something that you have for customers? <laughs> Seen a bank. We don't have lollipops. <laughs> we have space lollipops. Oh, I will lead me to the bowl. <laughs> well, all right. Here you go. It's normally just for good little boys who come with their uh, parents to the shop, but I guess if you want one. Do uh, I see a sign that says take only one? Yes, you do. In Fuck. fact, yeah. Um, <laughs> you see a sign that says take only one over the lollipop bowl. Um, and you reach in and you grab uh, a uh, like pink and purple swirl. Oh! Uh, and if you were to taste it, it is firmly a cotton candy flavor. <sighs> oh, like chew on it like it's a cigarette. <laughs> you did good, kid. <laughs> we're gonna go get some pink waffles. Well, I'm not a kid. That was the other guy. I'm like 97 years old. See you, but- kid. Okay, well, you got some strange traveling companions, sir. Yeah, you can say that again. Okay, well, I would suggest you all the best pancakes in the in town are uh, at the watering hole. We said waffles. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, that's way up the other end of town. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> We don't mind the wall. Get the fuck out of here with your pancakes. <laughs> Did I say pancakes? I meant waffles. <laughs> oh, the waffles. The best waffles in town are at the watering hole. Uh, you have been there many a times. You could say almost that you grew up there. Oh. It fills you with slight apprehension to go back. Yeah, I feel it. As you're saying it, I feel it. <clears throat> Uh, what I would do is basically, if if nobody else has anything else they'd want to do, I'd be happy to lead the way, and and I would like start walking towards the watering hole, and almost not realize I'm doing it, right? And like just kind of like talking to to you guys as we walk and say, uh, there's a chance that we run into some people who are pretty surprised to see me. It's been so long, I almost didn't make the connection until we were here again. That being said, given the clientele of the track, nobody's gonna sell us out. People might be able to help us out with some favors. So this is our chance. What we need is a word that you can say that tells us that you want us to kill them. (laughs) No, no, didn't you hear there's only one rule? But rule with the rule. No fighting. No fighting. And that implies certainly no killings. So the word is no. No, no, that's (laughs) not the word at all. No. (laughs) There is no word. We're not killing anyone here. Mm, Take care of them. (laughs) (laughs) What if Rex shows up? What if if Rex shows up? Yeah. We're going to come up with a plan and we're going to deal with it. We're not going to fight with the guy. I'm telling you, you don't want to mess with these people. Oh gosh. Are, the, are, are space goblins going to come out if we start PvP and kill us brutally? <laughs> <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, oh god. The prismatic pathway bouncers. Oh yeah! <laughs> okay, I will mess it up. I will mess it up. We will follow your lead. You know what? 
I feel like we need some waffles. I feel like after my recent experience, I, I can't deal with pancake. If, I gotta stay away from all cake of all variety. If they only have pancakes, then the no the fighting water, rule is right out. <laughs> the watering hole has waffles, and we're almost there. Just oh. Everybody, hold on okay. to your pants. So okay. Should word, I change? Word is no. I'm no, you. no. The word is not. I am no. with you. There is no word. <laughs> Can you please talk to him? Look, don't kill me, buddy. Don't fight me, buddy. Can we just sit down? And fucking enjoy our fucking waffles in a fucking 1950s diner in a science fiction setting in peace. Yes. Trust me when I tell you, this is one of the first places we've been in a long time where people like us are welcome. In fact, we don't draw attention. It's not uncomfortable to have a bunch of bounty hunters around. So let's just relax a little, all right? We've had a pretty brutal few days. I feel beat up. Let us relax. Oh gosh. What if that one guy here? <laughs> Which guy? What one guy? The, the three horn guy. The guy with the eye patch. Not the guy with the four arms. He runs the diner. He's gonna be there. No, I know he's gonna be there. That one guy. <laughs> oh fuck, what was his name? Bracken. What is Bracken here? Do oh, we have God. a space pirate here for free? <laughs> or period? <laughs> I, I would have never seen a Saurian here, right? Or like, I mean, that would be kind of extreme. You would never have seen a Saurian. They were like on the outskirts of yeah. like yeah. Well, the Saurian like, yeah. like war host, the actual like primal Saurian band, is extremely pushed to the outskirts of the galaxy and really only savages right at the edge as like a ghost story. But Bracken was like a defector, right? Bracken, Bracken had split Turned away. To turn to piracy to reject the more primal side of things and live basically like a free life. You make a good point. But I don't think in particular Bracken's gonna show up. Even if the occasional space pirate happens to wander here, they know the rules. The bounty will take care of them. Okay, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get a lay of the land so we don't like, you know, call trouble. No trouble. No trouble. No uh, trouble. I, hey, you heard me. We've had a very emotional 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to, to completely drown myself in in waffle. Waffle, not cake. Waffle, or pie, just waffle. <laughs> Whatever you want and we can afford, get it. Okay, cool. And just, you know, try not to make a scene. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, we would never make a scene, right, LaBouche? <laughs> No. <laughs> Cut to the space waffle house. Bruce is going ape shit. That weird green bug alien from Geonosis and the oh, alien yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I go over to the Kerrigan from Starcraft. <laughs> Best smash oh, cut. Oh man. <laughs> All right. You we ready walk to, to the. We walk ready to, ready to leave the garage. We walk to the water and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we have that whole conversation on the way to the water. Yeah. Angle. Not yet. You oh, make okay. your so, way oh, out of the garage. I apologize, GM. Yeah. Uh, and as the door swings wide open in front of you, uh, lights strike your eyes so bright you have to blink it away for a second. Um, I have no eyelids. You know the scene well, Pike. <laughs> the race having just recently finished, a prelim track deciding who would be able to take place in the Grand Prix, securing their racer's number. Uh, won by a mysterious racer number eight. Celebrated. Uh, by all. You can see banners of people running throughout the town, carrying different numbers of their favorite racer. You see depictions of people as you walk around with helmet, with goggles. Uh, you see, though, what is a little bit odd is there is a large group of people running all throughout, all different types, celebrating and cheering, but right at the mouth of the garage as the door opens, has begun to amass a small crowd 
uh, that is whispering as you walk out, and you start to pick up words such as the sparrow. He's back. It's Pike. Uh, and you will have uh, a couple of it in hushed tones. Oh my gosh, is it him? Is it him? Is it actually him? It couldn't be. He hasn't been here in years. I thought it was pronounced PK. <laughs> Come in I've only ever read it. This is crazy. <laughs> like, run like the wine. <laughs> that guy couldn't have been right. I always thought it was PK. <laughs> oh, is that why he always says PK fire when he shoots his little gun? <laughs> PK fire! PK fire! <laughs> PK fire! <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, <clears throat> This group of small kids runs up to you uh, and says, Pike, Pike, is it you? Pilot of the Sparrow? Yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm Pike. And he holds up a poster of the Sparrow in its, in its beautiful coloration, sheen mint condition. Would you please sign this for me? Uh, yeah, sure, I guess. And I take it and I open it up and I'm like, who the hell is making this? <laughs> uh, I didn't know they. You know, I'm like, uh, and I'll, I'll take whatever signing up on me he has, and I'll just sign it. Uh, Pike and the Sparrow. <laughs> he hands you a silver uh, marker, yep, and done. you draw Pike and the Sparrow on the on the uh, poster. Wow, it's really him! It's really him! Oh my gosh! I didn't think this would happen. Oh, oh! And they they run around. And the crowd's kind of like, oh, oh my gosh, it's him! It actually is him! Um, and his best friend! <laughs> and no one else who blooms! And his best friend's little children! Hey, and his best friend's little children! Free balloons to all fans of Pike! <gasps> Free balloons? <laughs> yeah! Can, can you do the sparrow as a balloon? Oh, of course I can! I. I fought alongside the sparrow, if you didn't know. <gasps> what kind of ship do you fly in? A, a hellish flying saucer. He said flying saucer? Yeah, I think he said flying saucer. From the depths of the realm of death Well, that's pretty, that's pretty lame, I think, right? I mean, it's no sparrow. I, yeah, I don't really know. I, I, I mean, flying saucer, that's about the oldest thing anyone's ever seen. Oh, wow. Oh. What is it? It's perfect. Sorry, it's a little off. I miss it. the shape isn't entirely right, but it's close enough. Sorry, I'm a little off my game because we witnessed the death of our friend. One of our friends turned into a horrible super weapon, yep. and I witnessed my favorite animal being brutally murdered. Yep. And uh, either my greatest enemy or my dearest love or both, uh, I had to confront her just an hour ago. <laughs> It, it doesn't look like the, uh, the. It doesn't look like the sparrow at all. It's just a butt. No, it's actually yeah. It's, just, it's actually when you pull them together, it's a very, it's a very thick thigh it's representation the of the Charlie. Oh, Space Freud was right. Oh, is that not what the? Some, is that not what it looked like? Sometimes a peach is just a peach. <laughs> Remember that, kids. Uh, <laughs> you got it, PK. <laughs> oh. Let uh, me try again. <laughs> no, they run away screaming. <laughs> wow, you Go on, get! You're really famous around here. I don't know if famous is the word that I would use. I'm kind of surprised anybody would even recognize me, to be honest. It's been so long, I would think most people had forgotten. Hmm. And... That would be the case. Uh, it's been so long since you've held such a prime position at the track that most people would have forgotten. But, uh, as one of the top three all-time contestants at the track, coming in second place, uh, your ship and your name lives down in, in the Hall of Fame of sorts, of greatest racers who have ever come through. Uh, and their parents, old generation from a long time ago that still talk about the time they got to see Pike race the Sparrow at the Prismatic Pathway and how unbelievable it was to see the flames tear across the track. 
May I ask one question mm -hmm. in, in, in clarification of uh, time here? Uh, are solar elves living naturally long-lived lives? Like, unnaturally long-lived, yeah. yes. Yep. So, when I said that Pike was between late 20s and early 30s, that is the equivalent of... Yes, biologically. Just so yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. it's not, you know, he's he could be a couple hundred years old. He's, uh, yeah. Right, depending he's, on what the equivalent would be. Yeah, yeah. When you decide that, but yeah, he's still he's still unnaturally long lived. Anyway, yeah. thank you. <clears throat> uh, exactly right. We um, head to the Waffle House. I mean the watering hole. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and you make your way. You guide the party down these pathways. People race through the streets chanting. Uh, he won, he won. Oh, next time we'll get him. I'm so excited for the Grand Prix tomorrow. Can you believe it? It's tomorrow night. Um, as people are just celebrating in the streets, confetti streamers blasting out, uh, lights shining uh, as you make your way through the crowd. And you eventually come upon a more modest uh, building that you know as the watering hole. All the buildings look more or less the same. Outer gray metal, uh, standard door in a, in a larger archway, double entry, uh, almost like saloon doors. Uh, you could walk right through and head into the watering hole. And as you stand at the steps that lead you up there, pause for just a moment, considering whether or not you should. I would say that you would all see me generally as a person who doesn't waffle. I make decisions and I stick to them, especially if you make a decision or whatever. And you might notice this, I step up, I take one step up the stairs and I pause for a moment before I continue and I walk through the doors. <clears throat> I'll follow. You know, Pike, I, I knew you were good. I didn't know you were that good. <laughs> it was a long time ago, Red. Come on. Another Let's... lifetime ago. I'll follow Pike into Dexter Jetster's <laughs> space timer. I mean, the watering hole. <laughs> Is that another, uh, that's gotta be another, uh, Storm Bad thing. <laughs> it's, uh, Star, Star Wars, Wars Episode Wars. 2, Attack okay. of the Clones. Okay. And you walk <laughs> Johnny into Rockets. Dexter Jester's Johnny Rockets 1950s, uh, diner. Um, you hear the words before you see him. And there I was, fighting for my life at the edge of the universe. The wolves didn't bite half as hard as the cold. Oh, he's so dreamy. Just out at the other end of the bar, you see it first, sitting on the edge, a white cowboy hat. Surrounded by a group, hanging on every one of his words, <laughs> uh, you see that same orange hair that bleeds into vibrant red frame the face of Rex. I had to blast my way off that planet single-handedly. My robots destroyed, speeder broken. I made my way on foot back to my ship. Everything you can think of stood in my way, and some you can't, but nothing stops Rex Maxim. <clears throat> oh gosh, he's just so dreamy, I could fall into his eyes. Oh, Rex! Oh! <clears throat> and it carries on like that at the other end of the bar. Mm -hmm. He doesn't yet notice you enter. I will point at him. And I'll say, hey, wait a minute! <laughs> that guy's wearing white after Labor Day! <laughs> Looks up. Put your head down. <laughs> he looks up. <laughs> what, what a fuck up. <laughs> he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He, 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 he would see a stand. He would see a stand. 
Do you oh actually God. shout out that he's wearing a hat? Or it's up to you, I try to stop him. I don't. I don't think I'm saying it loud so everyone hears me. I'm saying it to my friends. Oh, okay. okay, you can. Okay, yeah, we'll make I'm that like claim. Like screaming. Yeah. You get this in the jungle doesn't recognize him. And I was like, <laughs> keep your fucking head down. <laughs> That's Rex. Oh. <gasps> I want to like like we keep our backs and we try to get like a. Uh... How, how are you gonna hide me? There's no version. I was gonna say my hair sticks out like a sore fucking thumb. You know. I didn't recognize them without his hat on. You can all roll a group stealth check. God, Jesus. Oh no. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, I don't have the. What what are we, what are we making? Natural now? twenty. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my god. 19, okay. 19, 19. What, what are we Rhett's making? That's ready to go. Group stealth okay. check. Oh, we all rolled actually better. I don't, have, I don't have the ether engine, uh, yeah, so I, I, I spiked a seventeen. Let's go. Seventeen, oh, twenty-seven. You are disadvantaged. Twenty-seven. Oh, we're disadvantaged. Uh, you no, 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 no. It's just disadvantage. Twenty-five. 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 Twenty-seven. Seventeen. <laughs> and like eight. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> it's group. It's group. We're twisting. We're twisting. I cast without trace. I'm just kidding. We're twisting it. Fifteen. <laughs> we are so fucking stealthy right now. He does not recognize us. Fifteen. Lowest you guys are fifteen. Uh, okay. 25. And if he doesn't see us, I walk up behind him and shoot him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, well, uh, would I have been able to have uh, gotten a new uh, outfit? Since when? Like, at basically, before going off to, like, getting dressed to go on this adventure. Yeah, basically. you would have had, before yeah. you left the Rhapsody, as you docked in, I mean, even as you were just coming into land, you all had plenty of time. You 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 have an innate sense that you're in a far more safer environment. There's there's no pending eldritch or chaotic horror knocking at your front door. Um, you you can get dressed in your wherever you want in your room and be ready to go. I will have basically put on an outfit that is basically a mix between Dick Dastardly from Wacky Races. <laughs> oh my god. Or Snidely, they're the same guy. The Snidely, the guy from Wacky Races, and uh, Wario from Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'll have a kind of a helmet, and I'll have like a mustache. Oh, man, I'm looking I'll, up right now. I'll, I'll look like, a, I'll look like a, a racer. That's my that's my racing persona that I yeah. have. So I also look clown-like. It'll still be very clownish, but I'm going to try to not be like so chuckles. So Snidely Whiplash. So there you, you go. You get Not this outfit on, equipped with the hat, the full-blown cape. Uh, you also uh, classically have uh, racing goggles, which you couldn't find. Oh yeah. So instead, in the in the hangar bay, you ask the young mechanic for his, and because you were a companion of the Pike of the Sparrow, he gave them to you. So you have uh, you have pressured a, a young engineer out of his engineering goggles. Oh, sick! Thanks, kid. <laughs> And as we leave, Hank walks up and does this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fucking brilliant. That's a deep cut. And then he goes back into the... Fat arms, get on it! That is a get deep cut. Get on it! <laughs> Holy Hank shit. Hank is Muttley. Yeah. Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, okay. I need to take one side of the booth entirely, given my massive form. Uh, <laughs> the three of us are on the other. You guys are on one yeah, side. Yeah, Pike's in the I'm, middle. I'm just <laughs> like And you shuffle, even though you are a very odd... <laughs> A noticeable party. You're able to kind of hang to the shadows just a little bit as you shuffle on over. It's been uh, crowded. To, it's you know, it's crowded. Like, there are people in here. This is yeah. the watering hole. This is the spot to get a bite to eat to hang out. And you hear also uh, there's a crowd of people around Rex. <laughs> um, and make a perception check. Whoever thinks they'd be perceiving the area. Pike. I am definitely making them. Yeah, yeah, definitely okay. Pike. Please don't fuck this up. Nah. We're twisting. We're twisting. Yeah, again, yeah, hundred percent. I, I got a bazillion plus here. Use two <laughs> twists if needed. No, that's a twenty-six. Oh, twenty-six. Yeah. You <laughs> I said once. Let's say it again. <laughs> uh, you hear and see a couple things as you look. You you keep your eyes primarily on Rex, but you're also on the lookout for one other person. Uh, you scan the crowd, uh, and this is a figure you couldn't miss by a wide margin, uh, and you don't see that person. But Ooh. you catch Rex, 
you see as he shifts and he's regaling the masses with his story, you see pinned to his jacket the number eight. You also hear uh, from them gathered around, uh, oh, oh, Rex. I almost said Pike. Oh, Rex. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Say my name, baby. <laughs> oh, thinking Rex. About me. What's it like being a top three best racer of all time? Oh, well. Oh, it's pretty great. It's hard being as good as Rex Maxim. I hate that guy. <clears throat> Pike. Yeah. Who is the third best racer of all time? Would I know all three? Mm-hmm. I know number one. Mm-hmm. I guess technically he's now taken number two. Rex has taken number two. By the sound of it. Rex is definitely number two. <laughs> the... <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure oh, I work oh, out. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the number one spot has been unchanged since yep. the track has opened. Okay, I know that one. The two and three spots have interchanged between you and Rex for <gasps> decades. So as it stands right now, based on the conversation that I'm hearing, he's probably beaten my previous record and he's number it's two. Very possible that he is yeah. now number I two. I think that's safe to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> I can name all three. You and... Two others. Because I haven't raced in so long, and from the sound of what Rex is saying, I fall into number three. Oh. Given whatever's going on here right now, Rex probably beat whatever paltry record I left behind. Hmm. And number one is a man who's remained unbeaten since the opening of this track. Who's that? His name is Leo Khan. Leo Khan. Leo Khan? Who? I've never heard of him, but I'm not really much of the racing enthusiast, although my dick dastardly outfit would imply otherwise. <laughs> it was dick dastardly. <laughs> I was right. It was the size of the place from Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> I'll, like, I'll play with my mustache as I'll fiddle with it. I was gonna say. So, is he, so he still races? Do you know this guy? I... I did know him. As for still racing, no, probably not anymore. Is that old bastard still alive? <laughs> if I had to put my money on it, I'd bet yes. I, I honestly to, don't know. I used to read his name in the space papers. Man, I haven't heard that name in a long time. I have a feeling that if something happened to him, I would have heard about it. Wow. I can't believe you're famous. I feel like how long have we been we've been hanging out for a long time. Why would you never say anything about it? You must be very proud and really open to talking about it. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> uh, uh. The warrior must. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, I can't stop picturing that and I'm cracking up. <sighs> to be quite honest with you, Chuckles, I didn't think we'd come back here. It's only because we crossed paths with Rex again that we're only here in the first place. Otherwise, I never would have suggested it. Well, I mean, this is a pretty cool spot. I mean, I've never been, you know, friends of anybody famous that I'm aware of. You know, before this, I was feeling a little uh, conflicted about turning him in. But God, that guy's a cocky jackass. I'm ready to fucking apprehend that guy and chuck him to the boss. Wait a minute. We've been here sitting here for like 15 minutes. Do we need to go up or did someone... <laughs> no, eventually some <laughs> disgusting alien with four arms and a filthy apron and I'll a fucking wait. mustache I'll gonna wait. go up. I'll it's wait. a race. And that guy again. exactly walks up. What <laughs> <laughs> can I get you? Oh, I thought you were scratching your head on the way over here. <laughs> That's a part of the experience. You don't have to pay extra. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I haven't had space dysentery in a while, so uh, we'll have as many waffles Jesus. as you can uh, as you can offer. One waffle coming up. Get coffee, please. One waffle? One waffle. You, know, you make two waffles? No, four waffles. Four, no, can we get four dozen waffles? Four dozen waffles? Who do you <laughs> think you... Wait, do you make them? Four dozen waffles. 
Coming right up. Oh, yeah. And uh, around for the table, something extra strong. Your most pungent root beer, please. And for the ice cream, let's make it strawberry. (laughs) That's a nightmare. (laughs) But you didn't answer my question. Uh, Do you make the waffles? I don't cook, I just serve the food. Then what, what he said is good. What he said is good. Please stop touching your ass. I can't. I wasn't I touching my ass, I was scratching my balls. Your They're balls behind are me. Your legs. That's how the anatomy of whatever I mean, this creature is. Yeah, you don't know what works. Is. You don't have to use three arms to do it. Just use one arm. Well, one was for scratching, the other two were for pleasure. <laughs> he doesn't say that. I hate, I hate, this I hate everything about this session. I'm not going to tip more than 10, 15%. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Four dozen waffles. Uh, and a round of your uh, strongest strawberry stuff. ice cream root beer float uh, from space. Yep. And uh, all the space eggs and space bacon you have. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of much. space eggs and bacon. No, I don't think you understood what I fucking said. I don't mean a lot of space eggs and space bacon. <laughs> I mean all of the space eggs and space bacon you have. You're not kidding. All the space eggs and bacon we have. The hundreds of credits of space bacon and space eggs. <laughs> 400 credits! <laughs> Who would order this much space bacon and. Uh, <laughs> what is bacon lasagna? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. This will be the end of Stardust Rhapsody. Oh, yeah. Come down to the sky. We will see you see never again. Uh, it's been a real fun time. Campaign's over. Campaign is over. Uh, and Alger Shore falls from the sky and consumes all. I find a mini jukebox at the end of the table, uh, and I take out a single credit, and I slip it in, and I select a song, and now we wait. Bop, ba, da, do, ba, 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 that's not my song. Wow, well, this is my favorite song. Great that's song. That's not the one I chose. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for it. Nobody cares what you chose. It's the song that's playing. <laughs> wop, ba, da, woo, ba, 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 Holy shit, that is so fucking funny. <laughs> okay, well, I'll be right back with all of the space eggs and bacon we have. Four dozen waffles. Round a strawberry stuff. ice cream <laughs> root beer float. Coffee, please. And coffee. I'll have an orange juice. <sighs> We don't have orange juice. You don't don't have have orange orange juice? Oh, no, he means schmorange juice. (laughs) Oh, you meant space orange juice, otherwise referred to as schmorange juice. Sporange juice. Sporange juice. We have sporange juice, but only if you say sporange juice. Uh, I'd like the uh, waffles with fruit on them. We don't have that on the menu. Uh, No, you do. It's waffles waffles with some fruit. Say the name. (laughs) I'll have the... Fresh and fruity, fruity to me, please. <laughs> that happens. It's good. Take order, guys. It comes back and is like covered in peaches. Oh, everything reminds me of her. <laughs> All right, in this in this creature with four arms. He kind of shuffles away. And he never there. changes his apron. That's <laughs> fucking disgusting. And his apron, as he's, he's clean his hands on his apron, <laughs> nice and it has, like, grease stains across the front of it. Um, as this four-armed creature walks away. Uh, God, that disgusting mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they think he was a good idea? He should have been fired years ago. <clears throat> Well, what's the play here? I think we need to figure out what Rex's plan is. I guess he means to compete in the Grand Prix. He thinks he's going to win the whole thing and win that million credit prize. Well, we have a few options. We can let him win, and then we just take his million credits as a finder's fee for the boss. Or 
maybe we can try to get you in and you fucking beat him. And we win the million credits. Whoa. <sighs> well, here's the thing. Uh, we missed the prelims. Uh, there's no way they'd let me in at this point. Uh, I didn't earn my spot. You're and, famous. And even if we steal the million credits from him, you and I both know that that's not going to be enough to satisfy the boss. He's going to want Rex in person. Okay. Pause. Don't we know that, like, the boss is actually even more nefarious than we thought, and he killed our old pal, Killabat? <laughs> what? No, that was Gruncorp. That's totally sick. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, Shuckles? <laughs> oh, so the bo okay. So the boss is more of a uh, agent out for himself, and so he, you know, we're fine turning him over to be horribly tortured and executed by the boss. Well, Killavax was killed by corporate goons. <clears throat> okay. The boss is more of like a black market mafioso type. He really was a mafioso. Oh, that reminds me. A round of onion rings, please. I'm gonna put on Don't Stop Believing. <laughs> My song still hasn't come up. It's pretty good. <laughs> Immediately, as soon as you hit the button, Don't Stop <laughs> 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 I put my credit in. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> 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 Okay, okay, time out, time out. I just want to say before this stream started, we were talking about Thursday when I was DMing, and Mace was like, yeah, you know, you always think you don't prepare enough, and then you you throw in a throwaway breakfast scene, and you think it's going to be two minutes, and it lasts an hour and a half. You did this to yourself! This is all part of the plan. It's been a while since we had space eggs and space I breakfast. Planned, that's all I'm, I'm going to say. Uh, I'm now a master at pacing. I planned for this. <laughs> <laughs> the best part is we can, we can play until four in the morning. Um, uh, the whole time that we're having this conversation, though, do we still continue to hear Rex? Yes. Like, boasting. You hear him boasting. You hear him I don't like that. specifically talking... You, you hear him talking about the stories that you are all a part of, but with him as the central hero and none of you as even players in the show. I'm listening and to hear if he starts name dropping. Oh. Okay. Shit. Okay. Now, ladies, this is Space Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> I kill him. I kill him. I pull out my clown gun and I shoot him. Don't stop it. Just the clown. Three o'clock, Rex. Three o'clock. Um, the last question was, I was listening to see if Rex, like, name drops any of us while he's, like, telling these braggadocious stories. Mm -hmm. And the question was... Can we get in the race to win, and or can we steal the credits from him? Whoever asked that question. That you, was me. Okay. Then I'm going to say, uh, there's only one way that a racer can bypass the eliminations, the prelims, and get into the race. And it's if they have a special bid or vote from the number one racer himself, Khan. You okay, Labouche? I'm fine. They just weren't playing my song. There were uh, like four or five of them now. Splish, <laughs> splash, I was thinking. That's not my song! <laughs> 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 it'll, it'll play soon. It'll play soon. I'll put in another. Um, <clears throat> I mean, how, when was the last time you saw Khan? Is he fucking, is he still around here? What did he look like? Is he also a solar elf? Are all of the best racers solar elves? Why is that the case? Uh, is he really, do, they, do you all drive variation of the Sparrow? Why does he get to drive the Speeder and you have a whole spaceship? How did that fucking work? I don't know if he's still around here. Okay. My thought is, he probably didn't leave. The issue is that the last time that I saw him, we parted on less than friendly words. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can patch that up. 
There is no better healing agent than a slice of cake between, I mean, something that isn't cake between friends. Maybe like a, what's something good to split? Like a big bowl of beef stroganoff. <laughs> Have that here. Look, Chuckles, even if I wanted to apologize, I don't think the man would see me. Why? You never know how many years has it been. Maybe in, in the decades that, that have followed your falling out, he's gotten time and to heal and some perspective to reflect on your, uh, whatever it, it is that went sour in your relationship, of which I know nothing about. It's hard to say. It's been too long. Maybe enough time to forgive. Yeah. What happened between you two? To this point, the four-armed uh, gentleman who <laughs> is operating the establishment walks up. Oh, well, here's all the stuff you ordered. Four dozen pancakes. All the space eggs and bacon you can eat. And that we have... One chocolate soda, float, root beer, and coffee. Thank you so much, Mr. Let me read your name tag. Oh, Shup Glitto. <laughs> I thank hate, you, thank you, Mr. Glitto. I hate to be that guy, but we ordered waffles. <sighs> <laughs> Wait a minute, pancakes? <laughs> no, no, take them back. Take him back and bring his waffles. Uh, Whoa, look at that stack. Look how it moves. You have four arms. Four arms for breaking. No, LaBouche. There's no fighting. No. No. No, there's no <laughs> fighting. I hate you. Whoa, those pancakes are... I mean, you can just leave the pancake. You've already made them. He's famous. They're the fluffiest pancakes in town. I really should call her. Maybe you just take me back. <laughs> like a, what is a river of butter, just like. <laughs> Glistening as it's like cascading over. I like, told you we should have exactly left Exactly, the melt just descends around each layer. What do you think? What do you think, guy? No. Leave them, though. No. Leave them. Go, Mr. Shup Glitto. Shup Glitto, now canonically forearm Shup Glitto. <laughs> That's awful. Uh, I'm so sorry, Mace. Uh, <laughs> restaurant Purvator, whatever the proper nomenclature is. Uh, I'll be back with the waffles. Uh, Can you check on the, the, the jukebox? I have, I, I've been waiting on a song. Okay, I'll get right on that. Uh, uh, and with all four arms, he <laughs> walks away. Uh, the pancakes absolutely, uh, like, bouncing and jiggling as he takes them back to the kitchen. Are you okay, Chuckles? I mean, really, I mean, Jolly didn't think that bad. <laughs> Enough about Jolly! I'm just... All right! Okay! He geez. was an evil, heinous clown! You're right. You're right. You're right. She can't be fixed or saved. That we know of. <laughs> Here's hoping. Oh. Uh, Will you stop touching your fake mustache? Yeah, sorry. I, I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. I, I gotta. I'm gonna focus on the jukebox. Oh, they have the dancing brothers here. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have a good time tonight. Gotta have a good time tonight. Gotta have a good time. Gotta have a good time. You know, I always <laughs> like those dancing <laughs> brothers. <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got all the space bacon and space eggs we gotta ask for, so yeah, why don't you start on, with that? Just eat up. I will just vacuum. I'll just put. Well, I can grab whole handfuls of bacon and you just watch it fold into my arm and go into my torso, dissolving on route. That's a good question. Have you still been particularly hungry since the incident? Or is he like. 
Not since the Weaver. The Weaver. Okay. Yep. Once yeah, the Weaver, he, he, uh, he, boofed my, he boofed my shoe. That's Once the thought. Weaver just uh, intervened, just that sensation okay. received. So this is normal hunger. Mm. Got it. Mm. Um, I'm imagining it's been so long that it tastes and the experience is like the breakfast scene from Howl's Moving Castle with yeah. how delicious and yeah. satisfying it is. Yeah. I it is, yeah. This is like the most standard greasy bacon eggs diner fare you could get. Absolutely not what would be served in the nicest of establishments Yum. or or hotels, and that's exactly what you were in the market for. Oh, yeah. This hits spots you didn't know you had mm -hmm. as it goes down the the stomach, and uh, you are fully sati satiated uh, oh. as it's. Well, you're not even close to satiated, but you, it's delicious. It's quite. Good. Oh, I can't wait for those waffles. <clears throat> not pancake. <sighs> I'm trying to be a good clown. Thank. Is there anything we should do about Rex now? This, as he's been asking this the whole time, I've been listening to him just like running his mouth. Yep. Uh, I will say that as uh, as you've been listening to him, there have been one or two moments where he's telling a particularly uh, heroic story, and he has mentioned you by name. Uh, in the vein of having to have saved you from something, some threat, uh, armed penguin forces on on Aurora uh, as they attempted to run down uh, the two of you. Um, he paints a very heroic tale for himself uh, and you as in distress. I'd like the, uh, a new cigarette as Labouche asked me this question, I say, I'm not sure what we can do right at the moment, but he's over there running his mouth about us to anybody who's willing to listen. We may not be able to fight in this place, but surely we can embarrass him somehow or do something. Well, he's doing his best to embarrass us. Oh, who gives a fuck? Nobody knows who we are. I mean, maybe they know who you are, but... Frankly, the more incognito we are, the more folks believe his story. The more we can fly under the radar. Yeah, and I mean, how are we gonna embarrass anybody? We don't know how to embarrass anyone, especially not ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> As you say that, Shulk Glitto comes back with the four dozen waffles. <laughs> the pancakes are gone. The pancakes are gone. Uh, God, maybe, maybe being like a two-quarter <laughs> motley ain't so bad. Oh, God. <laughs> Shop Glitto comes back. Great googly moogly. <laughs> Here are the waffles you ordered. All four dozen of them. Uh, and he walks up and places the stack of waffles down in front mm. of him. Oh, thank goodness. This will keep me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> I'll dig in. I'll take the top uh, waffle and I'll roll it up like a cigar and then it'll slowly make its way up like a chute uh, into my arm as it uh, makes its way towards my central area for digestion. I imagine this is so delicious. It's like the waffle scene from Old Dogs Go to Heaven. <laughs> oh, how delicious these waffles are. It's wow. actually like the peanut butter French toast scene from Shazam. Oh, I'm so, so God, delicious. These are deep like. cuts. Jeez. Oh, wow. That's fucking delicious. Oh, did my root beer float arrive? He brought you the wrong thing. That came in the first order. <laughs> this guy really fucking sucks. <laughs> also, it's a little cramped on this side of the boat. <laughs> Pike, are you okay? <laughs> I'm in the middle, like... <laughs> like, like I got it first. <clears throat> Pike, I'm are you like, okay? I'm... Am I all right? Oh, so, yeah. sorry, Pike. I, no, so I keep helping you. I'm right-handed. I don't know what else to say. There's plenty of room, and I'm like with one. I'm trying to squeeze the bacon in between my lips while I keep the cigar in my mouth because I can't get my other hand up. Who's at the tight. ends of the booth? Well, Labouche has one side to himself, well, and then Chuckles is so on, the on the outside. Aisle. I'm on the outside. I'm on the outside. He's all the way on the inside. It might take a dastardly outside. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's at this moment you hear 
Well, now I just had to see who had ordered four dozen pancakes and had them sent back to the kitchen, only to get four dozen waffles in return. My favorite bounty hunting party. How's everybody doing? And Rex sits down at the table next to LaBouche. He leans forward and simply slams his fist on the jukebox. And free as a space bird. <laughs> Fly away with me. How did you do that? It's clearly not broken. <laughs> I've got another credit. <laughs> Well, 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 Pike, I didn't think you'd come back here. I didn't think I'd come back here either. Oh, chasing little old me still, are you? Heard you, uh, qualified for the Grand Prix tomorrow, eh? Oh, you saw that race, huh? Yeah, you know, I did pretty good. First spot. Uh, didn't see the race, just heard the news. You only won because I wasn't here. <laughs> tough talk, tough talk. How's my smile looking on the sparrow, by the way? <laughs> oh, man. Does the captain know you're here yet? You know him. Word spreads fast. He was probably the first to know. Mm. You got some balls walking up to this table, Rex. Oh, so good. <laughs> Again, he's only doing it because he knows there's no fighting. Otherwise, we'd hand him his ass. Whoa, tough talk, gentlemen. I just came for a friendly chat. I have handed people their ass before. <laughs> he's testing our fucking self-control. <laughs> <laughs> It's like right there across the table. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Rex. It's me, Chuckle. I don't know if you recognize me. Who? Was he there last time? Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in disguise. <laughs> <sighs> this, we're, we, we haven't eaten in a while, so. <sighs> Oh, sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a shame you can't take place in the race tomorrow. You got a fucking huge bounty on your head, Rex. You understand that? I'm a wanted man, right? Everybody's looking for a little time with Rex Maxim. <sighs> also, the word you were looking for is lucky. Because you know you haven't beaten me in a race in, well, decades. Decades is a long time ago. Today's a new day. And you don't even qualify to be on the track anymore. I got better things to do, Rex. Yeah, it looks like. A lot of waffles. Well, I hope you all enjoy the meal. God, you smug fucking jackass. Wipe that stupid fucking grin off your face. Uh, Pike, if you could race, would you? If he's like getting up and leaving the table, when he's like five feet away, I'm gonna say, oh, and Rex, the moment you step off this track, we're taking you in. Well, I believe you're gonna try. You know, they say he never got back in the ship after you left. If that's true, then it's a damn shame. Fucking <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh. <laughs> 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 <sighs> uh, I'm sure I'll see you in the stands tomorrow. I'll shoot you a wink from the finish line. You gentlemen enjoy the waffles. You enjoy your final fucking days of freedom. Oh man, I'll never get tired of our witty back and forth. <clears throat> and he 
walks away. You hear him uh, hail the uh, bartender. Yeah. Uh, can I get a just an order of space eggs and bacon? Oh, uh, we're all out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dig a fork and I give him a big bucket. And you like shake the fork and put it in the air. <laughs> he definitely looks back and he's like, uh, I'm taking the bacon. I'm just <laughs> making it rain. Well, well, well. Rex certainly looks very silly now. <laughs> you like covered in milkshake. I'm covered in milkshake. Your mustache hurts like fuck. <laughs> yeah, he certainly looks very silly. <laughs> You, got, you, got you, you upended it when the straw no longer works, so you have this yeah. rim of ice cream around your face. Oh god. Never never melt. That's exactly right. Oh <clears throat> you gotta fucking find a way into that race. We can't let him win. If he wins, he'll be such a fucking celebrity, there's no way we're taking him in. We'd have to go talk to Khan. Alright. We'll talk to him. We'll get him in. We'll get you in the race. And then I'll do those modifications I told you about. Look, I have some ideas rattling around my brain. It's not a guarantee that he's going to let me race. I have faith, Pike. If there's anyone you can convince, it's an old racer like him. We'll see. Do you know where he is? Is he just living here somewhere? I know where he used to live. A man like Khan probably wouldn't move very much. My guess is he probably is in the same place I left him. But you never really know. I haven't really kept tabs on this place. You think he's dead? <laughs> no. He was always a tough bastard, and yeah. a whole lot smarter than me, that's for sure. That's for sure, really, I agree. <laughs> he kept his nose out of trouble. It's part of the reason we had a falling out. Because you got into trouble, and he bailed you out, and you cost him, like, his arm or something, or and, and, and he had a sacrifice for you, and you were really not grateful at all? It's not that... Oh. It's not that intense. Oh. The man basically raised me. Whoa. He took me in when I had nowhere else to go. He's the one who taught me how to race. Ultimately taught me how to fly. He's the reason I'm as good as I was. Back then, Rex and I were more or less rivals. We were racing against each other all the time, and Khan, of course. That's how we learned. That's how he taught us. Who would win more, you or Rex? Well, in the beginning, it was Rex. What a bitch. <laughs> he was a natural learner. He had something that I didn't. He does have a certain genesis qua to him, you're right. A what? A certain ishwadvi. A what? <laughs> A certain thing what he's caught about. Ah. <laughs> but over time, something changed. Hmm. You know the, the light, the radiance that emanates from me? Ah, you've seen yeah. me do it. The, 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 the solar step, the... Abilities that I have while we're fighting. Your like, elfy etherealness. Something about that mm. unlocked. Khan said I had potential. He saw that within me and he helped me nurture it. And after that, I couldn't lose. Whoa. Needless to say, old pretty boy over there didn't take it very well. He doesn't like coming in second. But ever since then, I never lost to him again. Time went on and Khan tried to shield me from certain things, especially regarding this 
inner nature, this soul, something about me. But, adventure called. Whoa, I had to get out of here. I wanted real freedom. And where else to find it but in the stars? So I left. He asked me not to go, and I told him to get Ben. Whoa, did he? Get he Ben? He didn't take it well. Needless to say, that was the last time I ever saw him. He told me not to return. And I didn't. Until now. Well, let me uh, posit this. Let's say we go to the old man. What are the odds that he gets, you know, like Hollis Mason from The Watchmen, you know what I mean? Like we go back to this old man, get him wrapped up in his old business, and he gets, <laughs> <laughs> he gets beaten to death in his own home. That's a really deep cut also would be apropos and dark and shit, Red. Pike. <clears throat> I feel like now is your chance to regain your honor. <laughs> oh! oh milkshake is everywhere. He knocked the milkshake over. It spreads <laughs> all over the table. Oh, my Ruth Tootie Fruity Smoothie! Oh. Somehow, it didn't seem like there could be any left in the cup because most of it is on your face. But the table is covered. Oh. Oh, damn it! Ah. Oh, I got it, I got it. <laughs> I look to Rhett, and I say, uh, Trust me when I say he is a tough old bastard. All right, I'll take your word for it. Just wanted to throw it out there. So we don't have any regrets. I'll take my bit. <laughs> my mouth off. <laughs> well, I think now's the time for you to, 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 to come to terms with uh, your old mentor. And then I think that'll give you the je ne sais quoi that you need to beat that bastard. And I had no idea that you were so accomplished, Pike. I always kind of thought you were like sort of a deadbeat like the rest of us. <laughs> you know, a bit of a loser down on his luck. Uh, in more ways than you know, Chuckles. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't know that you really had like any kind of skill set before that. So that's really impressive. You've seen me fly hundreds of times. I thought it was more of a hobby that you turned into a profession. <laughs> so be it. Who would do such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> that was very meta. <laughs> that's very funny. <clears throat> anyway, right. I think that we need to find this guy. Get his blessing of oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sit on your fucking hands. It goes all over everywhere. the table again. <laughs> okay, I'm sitting on my hands. <laughs> I think that we really need to we need to we need to get you in the wraith. Or else there's no way we'll ever pay for the repairs. How is he going to race? Isn't his ship mostly destroyed? Uh, how are that is tomorrow night. With any luck. The guys who are currently working on the ship, they're gonna put a, they're gonna fast track it, <laughs> given, uh, you know, who we are. <clears throat> and if we can get in there and make some extra modifications to it, well, we'll be ready in time for the race, but it's all for naught if we don't get Khan's approval. I need his nomination before anything else happens. All right, well, I'm stuffed. Uh, I mean, what else is there to do besides look for this guy? We wait. We wait here until my song <laughs> plays. <laughs> oh, wait, right. wait, what, what song do you want to you hear? Remember walking in the sand. Oh, let me, tr let me try real quick. Let me try real quick. Uh, I'll just put in a credit. It's probably not going to work. It's definitely not going to work here. Oh, there it is. Beep, beep. Hey, everybody, my name's Chubby Checkers, and I like to do a little dance like Goldberg twist. The milkshake breaks the jukebox and it catches on fire. Ah! That wasn't my song at all! Oh, man, that's the one that I picked. Uh, let's just go. <laughs> Wait, hold on, we gotta pay the check. <clears throat> check, please. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, here you go. 
We'll just put it on your ship tab. No, 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 no. Rex agreed to pay for our order. Rex, Maxim. Yeah. We, we are all racing buddies with him. Yeah, didn't you see him sit down at our booth? We had a lovely conversation. Do you mind if I look at the tab before you pass it along to Rex? 400 fucking credits. <laughs> Roll pursuit to check at disadvantage. <laughs> I'm kidding. Out advantage. Out advantage. Out advantage. Out advantage. No, out out advantage. Is we did really order, uh, 17. We did yeah. order all of the space, egg and space bacon that he had. Hey, hey, how much space we got in the freezer? <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of leftovers here. Okay. I'll pass it along to Rex. Thank you. Here are your to go boxes for the rest of the space eggs and space bacon. <laughs> Enjoy your fucking stay. Thank you, Mr. Glitto. Oh, um, whatever happened to those pancakes that, that, that we didn't order? And we threw them in the trash. That seemed like an awful way. <laughs> you want we could go to the trash? <laughs> Maybe just a look. <laughs> <laughs> God, you got a bunch of sick fucks. <laughs> So I think he's moving like that. <laughs> you leave. You leave the watering. Oh, I got soda ball in front of And as you leave the watering hole, fuck, you see the trash cans out front jiggling to and fro. Uh, <laughs> we have to win back quickly. Yeah. We have to get away from this horrible diner. Um, I would uh, attempt to lead us to where I remember. It's very funny. Leo Khan's residence being, or where maybe where he would hang out in his shop, mm -hmm. um, but looking for people that might know where he is and ask along the way, mm -hmm. um, and just go off of what I remember, what I recall, and whoever we might pass that might have knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, you're leaving, and as you get uh, just almost out of earshot of the watering hole, you hear, uh, "How much did they eat?" <laughs> Uh, as you carry on, you, see, you pick up the pace. Oh, oh, hold on a minute. Jason, hold on a minute. Do you have a dessert menu? <laughs> no, you're out. You're not in the diner anymore. You're out. We're going, we leave. Yeah, we're going. Yeah, no, oh, you're on the road. The DM being like, get out. Yeah, no, no, you're you're actually already at Leo Khan's. Um, you're walking <laughs> down the street. <laughs> Holy shit, it's right over there! Where you going? <laughs> this is the other sense. Yeah, Leon Khan's place with like a blinking yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, <sighs> you come across, uh, the exact same, you come across a dock, walking home from the hangar bay that checked you in. Um. Oh, hey, Pike. Hey, Doc. It's uh, good to run into you again. Do you, uh, can you tell me if uh, Khan is still around here? Does he have the same shop or residence? It's been a long time since I've been to the track. You're looking for the captain? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, he used to live just down that way, but since... Couple years back, it's hard to remember when he he moved. He built a little extension on a shop out by the the track up top. He's got his garage up there, and he just lives over there now. No one knows why. He hasn't been back in the ship, and it's hard to say how many years. Oh no, he got Hollis Mason, didn't he? <laughs> no. Come no. to think of it, probably around the time. I mean, it would have been around the time you stopped racing. Oh God! All right, <laughs> thanks, Doc. We'll go. Uh, oh. We'll go find this shop. Come on, guys. And I would, uh, I would go search for this, you know, shop that he may have built by the track in the back <clears> to see <throat> if we can get in there and hope that people wouldn't stop us. Uh, and, he'll, and he'll he'll say just as you're parting, uh, it, it's hard to miss. It's just he's got the best view of the place. As the number one guy, he he gets free reign. So, I mean, some say, hell, he built the prismatic pathway. It all sits on his shoulders. He keeps this place running, but he's got a little spot, just looks over the whole thing. He can see every race. 
Thanks, Doc. Uh, we appreciate it. Damn shame he doesn't do it anymore. Good luck. Thanks, Doc. You're always full of wisdom. You're welcome, nameless companion of your folksy idioms. <laughs> <laughs> we proceed. I only have but we so many proceed. voices. <laughs> Let us proceed. Um, oh, there she is. Oh, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen him so wise or ever before. Oh, I've never seen him so damn <laughs> or ever before. <laughs> um, guys. Uh, yes. <clears throat> I don't want to spoil. And you're walking. Oh, we're, you're right walking. we're walking. We're yeah. walking. I don't want to spoil a moment with your former mentor. He might be like, "Holy shit, that's a motley in. What the fuck are you doing?" I know my disguise is really good, but does it make more sense if we split the group and we sabotage Rex? Will you guys get? Will you guys take care of getting the approval? Maybe Labouche and I can sabotage. Is that against the rules? Oh, it's definitely against the rules. But, like, we're not going to get killed or anything. Well, they take racing here pretty seriously. I, I can't stop you if you want to go mess with Rex, but if I had to guess, he's going to have security and then also the shop guys and then also the race officials and there's a lot of uh, personnel that float around here and keep an eye on things how are they going to stop us they won't fight <laughs> whoa there's a reason that no one fights and those people are the ones that would stop you <sighs> to put your mind at ease though chuckles yeah i don't need you to sabotage him for me to beat rex <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> well, do you think it would help? I don't know what to tell you. I think you're putting yourself at needless risk, especially being a motley and drawing attention to yourself unnecessarily. You're right. Maybe we just stalk him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do stop harmless you. pranks like tie his shoelaces together. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. We just harmlessly prank him. Let's harmlessly prank him. <laughs> now, if the man wasn't able to sleep for the next 24 hours, that would probably mess him up That's pretty good. I don't want to poison him, but let's just say, if he if he has to go number two, he's gonna come in numbers. He's gonna be racer number two yeah. during the race. <laughs> go buy some space laxatives. I've got, I've got my concoction. You already have laxative? <laughs> Did that surprise you? No. Anyway, how about you guys go have the emotional reunion, and we're going to go see if we can stalk and harass um, and sabotage uh, Rex. Whatever you want to do, I'm not going to stop you. Okay, I have a really good idea. Great. I will join you. I mean, if we're going to split the party here, I could get started on my modifications if it's not you know if it's tomorrow night well i definitely wouldn't hate that that's a good idea and that way we're not cramping your vibe pike i feel like oh hey it's me and all my my friends that i've abandoned you for <laughs> it's, I mean, how's he gonna take that especially when i've got this mustache <laughs> he's gonna take it however he takes it i choose to be with you guys i wouldn't bounce around the solar system if i didn't want to I hear you, but I think it is for the best. The urge to scream Khan would be irresistible. <laughs> yeah, no, he, we, I gotta take him. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll, we'll go. We'll go. We'll go find Rex. We'll, we'll be really incognito. Whatever you say, but I'm telling you, be careful and don't break the rule. We won't. We would never fight. Never. We're not fighters. We're not fighters. I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. <laughs> um. We are the galaxy. Come on. We are Mod the Uzoi. Yeah, we the are the Mothia. And so the party we are the ones to make the world a better you place. You go wherever to go on your eye, James. I Rhett, God help you. Rhett goes to the hangar to fix his ship, and Pike makes his way to... Uh, uh, the captain, uh, and and break. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and break. Uh, Rhett, you get to the hangar bay quick and easy. You see the ships are well underway with the work that they're accomplishing. Doc has already made solid headway uh, on the Sparrow. It looks almost completely fixed. Uh, he has dedicated a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into bringing this back to its former glory, but it still has a ways to go. He has a team working on it, what looks like around the clock. Um, you can tell he did also spend some time on your ship in particular, fascinated by the marvel of engineering that it is. Uh, nothing, Ether Dwarf or specific, uh, engineering feats by yourself, heavily modded, have been touched. But just standard, like, hull repair, uh, with great care to respect what you've done to, to maintain in, uh, its place. Uh, you two chuckle fucks, I don't know what's going on. You're going somewhere to do something. <laughs> <laughs> they, they said, and I quote, we want to stalk Rex Maxim <laughs> to do harmless pranks. <laughs> You're going to stalk Rex Maxim to do harmless pranks. We're gonna, we're gonna... You go back to the watering hole, yeah. you get mesmerized by the trash cans, and you're tanked for right now. Okay. Yeah, no, we, we, we'll, we're off doing shenanigans, focus on Leap Guy. Yeah. You guys are just in the trash cans in the diner. <laughs> Everything, we're, should I call her a little bit? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, she but she was evil, right? Would you even be able to call her if was you Was she like to? more maybe morally gray? No. <laughs> yeah. No, she was evil. Do you remember when she cut the llama corn's throat? <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty bad. Dark. That was really bad. Dark shit. That was really bad. The Jack in the Box is those were all people she found named Jack that she murdered and then turned into into Jack in Boxes. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's pretty bad. Uh, yeah, that's bad. She tried to turn us all against you. Yeah, you're right, you're right. The further I get away from it, the more I'm starting to, like, make excuses. it. <clears throat> you're right, that mama corn. Oh, that poor... I'm glad we saved him. Brett saved him. Okay, well, I have an idea for harmless pranks. Okay. That may not be that harmless. <laughs> and Pike, you arrive <laughs> <laughs> at the captain's place. You walk up by yourself to a familiar scene. It is a large space. The workshop door is open. You see a dusty, uh, like, covering or tarp thrown over uh, what you would assume to be his his racer, mm -hmm. the Atlas. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> it looks like it hasn't been touched in years. There's a crew running around, just standard maintenance people. Uh, you don't see the captain uh, as you walk past, but they're attached at the far end as you move along the, the garage space. Uh, there is what looks to be uh, a residence that very clearly has a second level with wall, floor to ceiling windows that looks out over the racetrack. I would just be walking through this area, like taking it all in, like, you know, the smell of like the oil and the machinery and like, you know, uh, fuel and things like that. And like remembering back to the last time that I might've been here. The oil hits, the oil hangs in the air and hits your nostrils like it never left. Uh, as you walk through, you can almost swear that you could hear the roar of the engine of the Atlas coming to life one more time. Uh, is, this is as much memory lane as is possible for you as you move through this space. You think about all the uh, near winds, the checkered flags, the laughs, the heartbreak that you had while you were here. Uh, and for a moment, you think on that time fondly. I would proceed forward to find uh, an entrance to this residence and see if there's a door that I can knock on. As you move forward, you go along the garage. Uh, it's granite floor, uh, cool, with little uh, little work that's happened as of late. Um, <clears throat> you move towards the residence, uh, and it's very clear that someone's home and there's a front door that you can knock on. It's a couple seconds before the door 
slowly opens and an imposing figure stands in the doorway. I remember where I put these things. Okay. <clears throat> um, a large, not quite as large as Labouche, but a tall, imposing figure stands there. What was once white fur now turned uh, a, a deep gray. As the captain, Leo Khan, a giant, now gray furred Leonin, stands in front of you. One blue eye and a large burn scar that runs up his uh, right face. And what now is a glass eye. I heard you were back. Hey, Con. You got some nerve showing up here. And he turns and walks into the house, but he leaves the door open. I'm gonna take a step inside and say, <clears throat> mind if I smoke? He'll just gesture. I'll walk in, I'll close the door behind me. Been a while. Sure has. What brings you here, Pike? I'm gonna be honest with you. We came here because we had a tip that Rex was coming back. And he's got quite the bounty on his head. You came here to get him. You know there's no hunting at the pathway. A rule I put in place. We know, and it's not a rule that I'm here to break. But the moment that he steps off that track, we're taking him in. That's between you and him. As long as it doesn't happen in my town. And he'll continue to walk upstairs. Presumably you would follow. As we, as we head up the stairs, I'll just say to him, Rex is mixed up in some pretty bad stuff. Rex is Rex. He's always done what he's wanted gotten into trouble here and there. But nothing like what drew you away. I know. I understand. Rex is an upstart, but he's not a bad guy. He sits down in a big leather chair that looks out over the racetrack. Nothing's happening out there, but he sits down and he stops looking at you. And you see he's got a drink in his hand and you can see his desk off in one section of the room. Very, very minimal. Um, <clears throat> only two things stand out to you that's on it. A framed photo that's placed face down and a stargazer lily. A single one that sits in a vase. Did you have any hesitation letting Rex enter the prelims? Anybody can enter the prelims that wants to race. Rex is an honored racer. He entered of his own accord and I wouldn't stop. You gotta let me enter the race. Pike, I take no pleasure in saying this, but you're lucky I let you stay the night. 
you want to give people a show, right? There's only one man on this track that can beat Rex Maxim, and it's me. <clears throat> I guess I shouldn't be surprised that after all this time, you showed up on my doorstep and still, you just want something from me. <clears throat> well, here's what I'll give you. I won't do deny you and your friends tickets to the show. You can sit in box seats and watch the race. When it's done, you leave the pathway. So that's it? What, do you want me to beg? I don't want you to beg, Pike. I just don't want you to stay. There's nothing I can do to change your mind. I saw the Sparrow tear up the track more than enough for my lifetime. I don't need to see it one more time. I'll nod to him and I'll get up and I will put out my cigarette in an ashtray that might be on his desk. And we'll slide four tickets, like electronic, like gray slab things with blue readouts. He'll slide them over the table to you. <clears throat> Pick them up. And as I go to leave his office, I'll stop at the doorway and I'll turn around and I'll look at him and I'll say, you know, for what it's worth, you were right. I shouldn't have left. And I'm sorry. And then I'll proceed down the stairs and leave the shop and head back towards maybe the hangar to find Rhett where I know he's working on the Sparrow uh, with my head kind of hung low, hands in my pockets, tickets in my jacket pocket, and I'll light another cigarette as I walk through this city to go back to find. Make a perception check. Seventeen. With a seventeen, as you start to walk away, uh, you hear what sounds like <sighs> maybe something you kind of recognize. Like a frustrated, almost guttural, not quite a roar, but the sounds of extreme frustration and the shattering of a glass. <clears throat> <clears throat> And you make your way back to your friends. Uh, and you would know this, but for the relevance of it, his racer number is seven. Oh, of course I knew that. <clears throat> and you prank Rex. <laughs> oh, we have ideas. <laughs> no, we come back to them and they're still like... <laughs> Yeah, you have to check. So, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? <laughs> well, Chuckles is planning on sabotaging Rex in a subtle way, if it's possible. I have my own ideas as well. We're walking. Full of boosh. Mm. What do you think we should do to him? Well, uh, we could go to the nearby store, a market of some kind, and buy okay. some sort of outrageous fruit or vegetable, and we leave it. We leave it in his mailbox or on the seat of his car. Kavir told me once that happened to him, and it lived in his head rent-free. It's a pretty prank. Kavir was... was a sharp guy, wasn't he? Yes. But I was thinking about, like, finding out what he's allergic to, mm -hmm. and then using my mind-altering discordant magic to basically make him get absolutely wasted and eat nothing but stuff he's allergic to and not sleep. 
I mean, I think we can find ways to make sure he doesn't sleep without actual sabotage. That was what Pike warned us against. Uh, triggering an allergic reaction could mean disqualification or perhaps jail. Oh, that's why. The, but I mean, what if we the don't fruit get or caught? vegetable angle? It's just if we don't so get insidious. It could work. No, he's not going to notice it for like days. Then the race will be over. Ah, it may happen. Yes. Yeah. Perhaps we roll the dice and we try that. Then whatever you want to do. Man, should we try it? Should we be like, oh, hey, Rex. Oh, we can also disguise ourselves as like sexy uh, ladies that want the autograph. I don't know how to do that. I just wear this suit and I look like this. <laughs> oh, I mean, I could, I, could, I could give you one of my magic masks. Does that work? Yeah, remember what, what Cashrew and, and Shrukles did? That was very effective, but he was a uh, uh, humanoid desk like yourself. I don't know if it would work on my oozoid body. Well, we've been distracted by the trash can. I'm going <laughs> to take a look to see if Rex is still there, and then we'll see. Okay. Oh, gosh, this is really a filthy diner. Okay. You peer in through the window, uh, and it looks like Rex is long gone. <laughs> we lost him! Fuck! <laughs> We lost him! Okay, now we have to, we've got to figure, let's, let's track him down. Yes. If I was an unbearable douchebag, where would I go? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. He is going to the tasseled leather legging store. Sounds right to me. That's, if I was him, that's where I'd go. Well, let's go. Okay. We try to we try we go out the wacky shenanigans trying to find Rex. We go down to the market and we look for millions of tassels. <sighs> you spend hours doing this. You find every excuse to go to every SpaceX shop you can think of uh, to explore where you think you might be. Uh, roll a investigation check. Oh, sound I'm, I'm helping. I'm helping him. <laughs> roll. Oh, I don't fucking know. I don't know. fucking know. <laughs> We'd like to stalk Rex. Advantage. Well, we're doing what we said we were going to do. Investigation? God, mm -hmm. that's funny. 17. You... Where were you going? The Tassel's Legging Store? Yeah, we're looking... We're trying to think about... Yeah, the Tassel's leg Leather Store, like... We're going Got to the. It. We're Got going it. to like a store that has a big neon cow skull on us. Oh my god! And maybe an Outback Steakhouse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're going to. Like, oh, he would go there. I stomp up to one of those like in the mall menu uh, maps mm -hmm. that they have, like kiosk. The, the kiosks. Yeah, yeah I'll, yeah. I'll stomp up to that and I'll look for tassel stores, and I see that there are two. There's millions of tassels, and there's white tassels. <laughs> he could be in any one of these two. <laughs> or you were elf on the on the station. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm just making this up. I, I may or may not actually be doing that. You see a shop that does have not a uh, not like a horned cow skull, but a large star belt buckle as its uh, oh, as its logo. <laughs> Lone Star. And you go up to the shop and you look in through the window and you see the smiling face of Rex Maxim uh, <laughs> as oh, a cardboard cutout them. Found them. that uh, shows that he is uh, like a sponsored, um, he wears their belt buckle sponsored on the racetrack. Whoa. What a nerd. I was able to swipe this zucchini on the way. Good job. We'll save that for Plan B. And he is also in there purchasing another belt buckle. Okay, hold on. Thunk, thunk. I have my max. Are you ready? What do you want to do? Okay, we're gonna be fan that we gotta find out what he's allergic to and or afraid of, and then leave the rest to me. I'm gonna twin spell disguise. Ooh. Uh, I guess I need a roll for my wild magic. <laughs> oh God, where's my D8? 
it triggers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're not going to get to the prank. We're going to just burst into no, flames. No, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> Where's, I need a d10 that isn't a fucking percentile die. Oh my god, they're all percent. Well, this will be the first. 62. Uh, it is in my character sheet, I believe. Manage, manage characters and levels. Um, well, class features. Okay. 62. It's probably not that bad. For the next minute, I'm a shout when I speak. <laughs> you what? The yeah, fucking for the hilarious. next minute, I had to shout while I speak. <sighs> okay, Laboot! Oh! Rex is right in there! What? Oh, and so now, so we, I, I twin spell and I hand the mask and I hand it to you yeah. and I would put it on. And I am going to turn into, uh, Basically, the attempting the spitting image of uh, the host from the Cowboy Bebop bounty show. Yeah, uh, with Judy. Blonde, uh, Judy. Judy. Yeah. Judy. Uh, with like the blonde hair and like the tassely vest and like yeah. the cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> do you have to? Does that just happen, or do it's you do anything self, to? Yeah. yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah. so you, you there's, do that. there's like a limit to how much taller or shorter it's you can one make foot yourself. Each like, okay, yeah. okay, it's nothing yeah. crazy, right? As long as yeah. the humanoid is good. So you you're able to replicate well, that perfectly. Guys, Rex is in there. I think we gotta figure out what he's doing. There might also be rules if somebody like touches you, right, and like examines oh, yeah. you too closely, Let me right? Know. Yeah, yeah. Because that know. might that might come in as <laughs> <thing>, unfortunately. <laughs> there's for you. like you actually change your shit, and then there's like it's a skin illusion around. Right. You. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't yeah. remember. It's like if they touch well, you. One's they, illusion, yeah. I think. The yeah. changes. Rob as well fail the whole up to physical inspection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so as long as you uh, know, he's gonna physically probe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, partner. I look like the other guy from the punch. Yeah, no, but... you got. They are Punch and Judy. Oh, well, this is a deep is... cut of its own. This is. I mean, you choose the form for me. I would not be choosing for myself. So whatever Chuckles would say. I we're a we're a pair we're, of we're sexy Taurus looking for looking for what to call. You're like my sister. Well, we gosh. look like we look like the sisters from. Uh, I, I actually we're from the sisters from Soul Eater. Um, mm -hmm. You're Liz and, uh, and I'm Patty. Liz and Patty. Uh, yeah, you're Liz and you look like Liz and I look like Patty. Do I look okay? Yeah, you look great. Stop shouting! Oh, you look great. No, stop. let's go in there and see if he finds has any allergies or fears in there. Oh, uh, using using yeah. the momentum of the screaming and knowing that Rex is almost certainly looking over at us through the window, <laughs> I'll go. There he is. swings open as you're doing this uh, and you hear now don't worry this happens to me quite a bit ladies oh. aren't you a tall drink of water and a short stack of pancakes oh <laughs> Such a way with words. And he can race too. He's got everything. He's yeah. so handsome. Yeah. It's okay there, lady. I'm here now. You don't have to keep shouting at me. This is my sister, uh, Liz. My name is Patty. And we just came to the spaceport to watch the big Grand Prix. And we just couldn't help but, but seeing you, Mr. Uh, Rex Mason, as you being so famous of all things. Well, for fans, I see. I'm happy to sign an autograph or anything else you like. You might like me to do oh, for you. Oh yeah. Well, we all we have a, a bet, you see, going on. We said, and and my sister Liz says, uh, we was guessing, uh, uh what y'all might be allergic to, and also what you might be afraid of. Now, <laughs> if, you just, just, if you just if you just have a list of your fears, no, yeah, yeah, that's so. So our bet was, well, gosh, we thought that Mr. Rex Mason was so so brave and so perfect, but you know, certainly he must be down to earth and a relatable fellow. Probably not brave enough to give away all of his fears. <laughs> oh, you think? I don't believe that at all. So that's our bet. So if you can sign this. Rich has to be so confused right now. <laughs> you have this roll away. And this is what happens. Oh. So if you can sign this poster, and it's just in the paper, the paper venue from the diner. <laughs> if you can just sign this with that, 
that? That would be so amazing. Oh my goodness. Well, darling, I'll sign anything you'd with like your, with me to. With the fears and your allergies, too. You know? <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> Spike it. We're putting 50 twists on this. I don't give a shit. I'm ready. Uh, uh, give me two twists. Another one. Yeah, All right. I know. Give me one more twist. One more. 13, 12, 14, 15. Uh, Weird. So 15, yeah, wow. That's, that's not bad. That's okay, good. So 15 plus, I mean, I don't know how I'm good at I mean, you're a skill monkey bard. It's yeah, going to be true. a nightmare explosion. Plus 11, that's 26. <laughs> that's pretty fucking good. That's good. That's really good. With a 26. Well, yeah. And as uh, he is, he's signing with a 26, I'm just pancaking, oh. like, so hard. Oh. Yeah. You're clapping without I'm do, the I'm hands. doing the Aaron Brackovich, yeah. like. <laughs> um. You gotta bend and snap, bro. <laughs> I'm doing this. <laughs> okay. Well, all right, yes, you're all very please. convincing. Um, Mr. Rex Maxim, of all people, will be writing this town. Well, I am happy to write down uh, this signature for you. And you should know that Rex Maxim uh, has no fears. <laughs> However, for ladies such as yourself, wow. I'll let you in on a little secret. Oh, we love secrets, don't we, Cetus? <laughs> Yeah. And, he, and he leans in close. Oh, not too close. And he reaches, oh, and he reaches out to put a hand on your oh, shoulder. Oh, no. I've never been touched by a celebrity before. <laughs> this is brutal. I am terribly allergic to shellfish. Oh, is that so? I just clam right up. Dude, is that the darn truth of the space golf book? Exactly right, but don't let it... Don't let it... Anybody know the Rex Maxim allergic to shellfish? That's just a little something for you two. Well, gosh, it would be a terrible tragedy if you spent all night dr- down in oyster shooters at every seafood bar in this town, eh? Yeah, I would never do that. I cast a suggestion on him. <laughs> I would never do that. Uh, yeah, you would. <laughs> yes, oh, what is that? A save? Uh, uh, yes, uh, and I'm using a heightened spell, Madam Madam, which he's disadvantaged on this roll. <laughs> it is a wisdom saving throw. <sighs> wisdom 16. <laughs> and he's about as wise as a bucket of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. Well, did I say I'd never do that? I meant normally I'd never do that. Oh, wow, well, well, But I haven't had shellfish in so long, I'm curious if I'm still allergic. You truly are afraid of nothing. Yeah, he I truly think I'm going to spend serious. the rest of tonight down in oyster shooters wow. at every bar on the on the uh, pathway. Well, maybe you could buy us a round of oyster sh- space oyster shooters <laughs> just so we can confirm that you're actually going to do it. And then we'll, we'll blow you a kiss goodnight. How about that, big fella? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I think I would enjoy that quite a bit. Oh, well, how about it? Let's this is go. disturbing. And why don't you take these two VIP passes is to join so- me? What? You can cheer me on tomorrow in the box we'll seats. We'll be there. Well, well, actually, do you have any more than just two? Now, do you have four? Because we have some. We Our other sisters are coming in. They look just like us. That's true. Yeah. They're as pretty as you are? Except for the, the, the pretty one. She's yeah. really pretty. She's yeah, she way hotter yeah, than actually, we are. We are ugly compared to our two sisters. <laughs> well, so you then definitely want to get us those two other VIP people. Thank you, you can have much. five tickets in case you meet a beautiful friend along the way. Oh, well, thank you. Gosh, well, let's go celebrate these VIPs with a round of oyster shooters. Space <laughs> oyster shooters. And you navigate to the closest <laughs> bar, at which point the three, of you, <laughs> the three of you will down the first round of oyster shooters as you blow Rex a kiss and carry on with your night. Oh, good night, Mr. Madison. Good night. And you have a wild night ahead of you. Farewell. Good farewell. It was nice to meet you. Well, let's get out of here, Liz, and let's... Pretty, uh... I think that worked. <laughs> oh, I think it did. I can't believe he didn't say that he was allergic to latex. <laughs> Honga, honga. That's very funny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah>. Band. <laughs> Band. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, I, 
that. I want to head back immediately yeah. to where to where Rep was. And I don't want to head back to the Rep. I don't want yeah, anything yeah. to do with any yeah. of that. You all meet back together. It would have. We would have probably like faded. Like we'd been strutting up, and then suddenly. Like all the stuff that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah I said pretty skin with yeah. like sloth. The on. hair yeah. falls yeah. out of falls your head as the blonde my just lands on the hair floor. Yeah. Lo- my head gets larger and larger, and like actually filling out the helmet until it pops away, and yeah. then my helmet is there. <laughs> well, as long as I don't get, as long as I'm concentrating on this. Oh, I mean, excuse me. I'm, yeah, you don't my get the yeah, voice. I got the big old dastardly glove. Um. Should we walk back directly to the Rhapsody or swing by a trash can or two? <laughs> it's right over there. No, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> stop reminding myself of her. We gotta forget about that. That was, that was kind of fun. This is like, you know, kind of guy fight. Yeah. It's a change. It's the thing that Red and uh, Pipe missed out on it. That makes me feel better for some reason. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Smack it <laughs> to Red. Just <laughs> away. <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't work. I'm taking notes. Uh, and you all recollect at the Rhapsody together. Gotta go. <laughs> Not good. <sighs> what does that mean? Khan said after the race tomorrow, we have to go. But he gave me these, and I pull out four tickets, and I drop them on the desk next to you. We have a box. We can enjoy the race from afar, but he won't let me race. I told him. Rex is in some serious stuff. He's in way over his head. I told him about the bounty. I even apologized to the man. But he didn't want to hear it. Yeah, damn it. Well, I guess I stopped wasting my time then. Wait, you weren't able to persuade him? There was nothing I could say that would change his mind. Well, the booch, I guess we gotta suit up again. (laughs) (laughs) We have a lot of oysters (laughs) to serve. Oh my god. (laughs) That's incredible. Uh... Well, I set out to run Pirates of the Caribbean, but now I'm running Veggie Tales. That's a bummer. Oh, we scored four VIP tickets. Do you have VIP tickets too? We have our own private box, it seems like. Yeah. Well, gosh. Let me take a look at these. Yeah. Oh, God. These are Rex's section. We're not sitting there. That's for damn sure. Yeah. I don't I don't know if Rex is going to be up for racing tomorrow. At least he won't be <laughs> at top of his form. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> we definitely didn't violate the rules. I told you not to sabotage the no, man. No, we didn't sabotage the man. So it was a, it was a harmless prank. <laughs> not just a prank, bro. So, so Labouche and I, we go back to the diner. Uh-huh. We spent a couple of, you know, about a half hour by the trash can. It was like three hours. <laughs> it was like three hours they spent at the trash can. Yeah, you know, we hung out by the trash can, hanging out. Uh, you know, and then we were like, oh shoot, wreck is in bed. So we went down to the shopping district, went to the novelty belt buckle emporium. <laughs> of course he was there. <laughs> so we disguise ourselves as two very pretty tourists who are here for the race, Liz and Patty. Uh, our, our whole thing is that we were a pair of blonde sisters, who actually there were four sisters, but we were just two of them. We got there a little early, so we decided to explore the town. And so then we approached and he signed this autograph. I hand over the diner menu that I've stolen uh, with his signature. And he told us he's allergic to shellfish. So I used my motley and discordant magic to warp his brain and suggest that he goes and downs as many oyster shooters as he can without sleeping. So he'll do that for the next eight hours. <sighs> you know, Chuckles, we could have at least sold those tickets if he was gonna race tomorrow. <laughs> but the second they announced that he's puking his guts up, those tickets are worthless. Oh, you think that he, does it doesn't matter how bad he's feeling. I Rex is way too much of an arrogant prick to ever actually bow out. He would rather shit and puke himself in his on his speeder during the race. 
And he's really going to become racer number two out there. <laughs> Trust me. You have a way with words. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's going to show up. And we can still sell these tickets. We can pawn them. Look, at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter. I'm not allowed to race. All right? Easy come, easy go. <sighs> There's got to be another way. I was so sure you'd be accepted into the race. Well, why don't we just watch the race, let him win, and then the second he fucking leaves, let's scoop him up. That's fine, as long as we do it far away from the raceway, all right? Khan gave me fair warning that there's no bounty hunting, no fighting anywhere here, all right? And I told him that we weren't going to break the rule. We were just waiting for Rex to leave. All right, well, guess I did all this work for nothing. And you'll see, like, the ether core is now in, like, a larger engine that I can just, like, bolt onto the back of a spaceship. It's beautiful and glowing and, like, that was pristine really nice, chrome. Red, wow. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, buddy. I really thought that he might... You guys convinced me that he might let me race, that if I apologize, all might be okay. Man. I don't understand what he sees in Rex. Well... LaBouche. Hmm. Uh, you're thinking what I am thinking? That we should all get our own celebratory belt buckles to celebrate? <laughs> that was not what I was thinking. Oh, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was all thinking about that. But what I was actually also thinking about was that if he is able to race and he's too sick, maybe they'll say, oh, we need a racer. Who else can... Oh, we, it's such a shame to be down to one fewer than the standard race composition. Oh. And then you can be, I have returned after all of these years, and all the crowd will go, what? It'll be drama. I can try. But again, no one steps foot on that raceway without the captain's orders. Wait, hold on. If Rex is going to be shitting himself for the next 48 hours. Oh, next, yeah, it'll well depend on how allergic he actually is. Hopefully he doesn't die and then I'll be actually committed manslaughter. Well, we would look like such asses. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't he uh, wear kind of an anonymous getup, face covered, just the number eight on his back? What if we just send Pike in with a similar outfit? We'll just play him off as Rex. Whoa! <laughs> That's the greatest idea I ever heard, Brett. That's genius. Do you think you can shit yourself? <laughs> no, no, no one knows. No one knows this is gonna be shit. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm got up. I'm got up. <laughs> That really got me. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. And you all decide to go to bed for the night. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to go to bed. Uh, we immediately pass out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the night passes uneventfully. Except for you, Labouche. For the second time uh, since your journey began, you have a similar dream. You see yourself uh, on the beach. An expansive, almost looks like ice, like snow white ice, extends as far as the eye can see out in front of you. You calmly enjoy the view for a while. Until you stand up and you move towards the water and you realize that it's not ice at all, but white webbing that extends all out in front of you, Whoa. like the silk of a spider covering, <laughs> covering, and everybody awakens. <clears throat> I'll wake up. I'll be holding the uh, the cinnamon rabbit that I made, um, and I'm gonna try, either before bed or after bed, try to think about Jolly and think about what I remember. To see if there's anything else. And when I finally have some private time to like decompress, <laughs> and all of the shenanigans, 
Fire in the beer. <laughs> That's oh, all I was doing! Finally! <laughs> <laughs> it was just like. I am gonna think about Jolly and try in a very. In, not in that way. I'm gonna try to, like, I'll be, like, just kind of staring. I'll be, like, in my bathrobe and my bunny slippers. I'll be staring at the ceiling and just, like, very difficult to sleep. And I'm gonna try to think, try to force, like, I'm so confused, I have no idea what's happening. I'm gonna try to think about that before we get to the shenanigans of the next day. When I finally have some time alone to decompress. Roll a history check and an arcana check. What? Uh oh. Let me know which one's which. You have twists. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use one of each. I'm gonna use one of each. Well, I don't know. Oh, that's not that's 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 it. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No. Okay, that was worse. Um, thank you for the twist, chat. Thank you. So history was a ten, and so I'm adding. I'm adding. Oh my god. History. D D B hard, folks. Oh. History was a twelve. Arcana was a fourteen. Not bad. <clears throat> With a 12 in history, as you focus on this very deeply, you get snapshots as you rattle your brain and you try and think, what was that? And you think about a time before corruption, surrounded by llama corns, peaceful and happy. You see across the field, a smiling girl, very beautiful, with long blonde hair. You laugh together. With a 14 in Arcana, you recall a time after corruption. When your form had shaped and shifted, and you gained chaotic powers. And you see, across from you, Jolly. Both of you laugh together. <gasps> oh no. I am going to try to forget all that again. And I'll go to sleep. <clears throat> and you all head out into the day. You have moments to discuss or do anything you may want to do before you would head to the Grand Prix and make to take your seats. We long rest, presumably? Yeah, we, yes, you would long rest. All right, what's the plan? Do we just sit back in our box and watch? Here's the thing. As much as I would love to take Rex Maxim's place in the race and give him the glory and not myself, or anyone else for that matter, if for some reason Khan discovered it was me under there, we'd have way bigger problems than the boss, let me tell you. Do you have any way to know if your prank worked? Um... I would have, I would have held concentration. That's how I wouldn't be able to sleep. So that's how where I was basically thinking and ruminating right. on uh, mm. on Jolly. Uh, it's about standard for this level of Chuckles' mental health and ruminating and ruminating and thinking about it. So I would have stayed up for the whole time. I don't know if I would notice if it would break. I would keep concentrating on the suggestion. I would um, say that if you were concentrating on it, you know that it worked. Yeah. You got the sense of that intrinsically. <laughs> you watched them take an oyster, you space watched oyster them shooter. You take a space oyster shooter. Um, and if you were continuing to focus on it, I would say that regardless of where he was, as long as he was within the pathway, uh, you are confident that your spell, your suggestion held. Uh, I will have woken up and I would have kind of look, looked at my four fingers in the gloves. We try to pull them off and not able to, and like, oh. <gasps> 
cocked that cup, and after that question, I would say, uh, I've... Well, all I know is that he was pounding away through shooters and drinking and eating shellfish uh, all night, at least for the for eight hours. So maybe not all night. He may have gotten a quick nap in. But if he, what he said was true, he's going to be hurting. And even if he isn't allergic, <laughs> that boy was drinking a lot of, lot of liquor. I'm sure he's never been thicker. So, then maybe we just hope, hey, he at least doesn't get the glory. Some other racer is going to win the million credits. Well, and if he has to leave the uh, raceway in shame, uh, he's going to be real easy to catch 12 hours after this race is done, that's for sure. What if that is the solution? You could take the place of this racer eight and you could race the worst race of your life. I just, I worry about what would happen if Khan found out. I know you guys can't understand, but this is, this is serious. Khan doesn't mess around. What he says goes, especially here. And that'd be a seriously intense Khan to pull the wool over everyone's eyes and play Pike off his Rex. And he'd need to get his clothes and his outfit and his speeder and uh, convince everybody. It's fucking unlikely. Yeah. And it's fucking dangerous. Pour us ten minutes on that speeder and they're gonna know it's not Rex. <laughs> and we need... Oh, because you're gonna do so much better than he would. Yeah. That's Wait, the idea. Wait, speeder is kind of your thing? Or does any kind of fat the vehicle? If it moves, I can race it. Pike caught a fast, Peter. Now <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's stuck in my head. Look at the lyrics. There's a little lyric. Space lyric thought space calm. It just says. And then it goes. We can both get jobs. Do you know that you'd be able to race any vehicle that you were to step in or step foot on? But you have a special intrinsic connection to the sparrow, and there's nothing quite like piloting that. Sure, sure. Uh, I would convey that to them that that you know obviously I was trained like you said um, you know by Leo to to do all sorts of different racing but he taught me to fly and the sparrow is where it's at for sure and look there's no way that the sparrow is gonna get into this race you understand and there's no fucking way that we need to add another enemy to our long fucking list of enemies mm. and if we piss off Leo, yeah, I don't care what kind of fucking background history y'all have, but, I mean, what's going to stop us from, or stop him from fucking sending, you know, hitmen after us? Let's just walk the, watch the fucking race and just deal with Rex after the fact. Rhett is right. And again, I'm not racing. You guys did good. If he's doubled over and he can't even walk, it's going to be the easiest bounty we've ever walked away with in our entire lives. That's the goal. So let's just enjoy the race. We have box tickets. You know what that means? Free food and drink. <gasps> Come on. Oh. Let's enjoy it. LaBoo. You think they have space pigs in a space blanket? Oh, I'm sure they do. I oh. know they do, Rhett. Oh. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna enjoy myself. Let's fucking enjoy ourselves after what we've fucking been through the last few days. Guys, I don't wanna bring the mood down once we're there. I think I had a really hot wife and an awesome life and I lost all of it and got turned into this horrible abomination. Anyway, I said it. I said it. We don't have to talk about it. I just had to get it out there. Right as I was saying, no bummers, Chuck. I, 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 I knew I would have been dwelling on it all day. I need to process it in my own way. I need a real strong root beer. How do you know that? You uh, had a wife? I think so. But why do you think so? Because my 
my brain or whatever it is. I've been trying to think about my memories. We don't have to talk about it. I don't want to bring it down. This is Pike's big day, but I feel like if I don't say something, I'm going to be dwelling on it all day and all night. Hey, time out. Let's get one thing straight. This isn't my day. It's not anybody's day. You haven't been back in so long. It doesn't matter. The point is, we're here to enjoy the race. Okay? It'd be a different thing if we had to race and I had to win, but I don't. So let's just relax. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Tell us about your dream. Well, I was I was in a really happy place. I was on a beautiful farm of llama corn, and I... I, I was there, and I, I was just normal. I had, like, regular regular old human hands with five fingers. And I, like, had normal, just regular guy flesh. And I looked over, and I, I was laughing, and I was happy with just a beautiful woman who was kind of, from a third point of view, looked a little bit like Jolly. I was like, damn, how did I, how did I bag that? I don't know who I used to be. But I fucked it up, clearly. Are, are you saying you were some sort of rancher? Maybe. That's the the inference that I can make, and maybe that's why I love llama corns, and that's why I felt so strongly, and that's why Jackson and I really connected before he turned into goo. Look, don't read too much into dreams, all right? If dreams were true, I wouldn't have any teeth and I would have been killed by a tidal wave 8,000 times over. <laughs> yeah. It's right. I mean, it's, it's one of those, like, idealistic <clears throat> dreams where I'm like, I'm not. Me, Chuckle, would be happy and also a person. I mean, I feel like I was one of the Motleyans who just spawned out of the Honkweez. I don't know. Anyway. You think you can maybe, uh, you know, have fun today? Yeah. That's what Dandy and Kavir would want us to do, right? They want us to have fun. Look, and with any luck, <laughs> we're gonna have a pretty big laugh at old Rex's <laughs> expense when, uh, oh. things go south. Yeah. I hope it's all harmless fun. He doesn't, like, crash and die. <laughs> so bad about it. <laughs> oh, God, the reef is very dangerous that way. Good question. You have seen the. It is relatively similar to the. It's not like like a bloody death race, sure, but it is extremely high octane octane space crashes happen. Racing crashes happen. So, but but specifically, this race is not ships. It's speeders as well. It's a different style of race. No, it's it's both. Okay, you, it's whatever okay. your preferred, as long as it's within regulation. Got it. Whatever your preferred uh, entry ship is, uh, it's like the monster race from Scooby Doo. Gotcha. Hmm? Uh, uh, I mean, accidents happen, but death is pretty rare. I think he's gonna be fine, and we'll have fun. We'll have a good time. Do you think that they have space room cocktails? I'm sure they do. I'm gonna pull all four tickets out of my jacket pocket and say, come on, first yeah. round's on me. After all this talk of shellfish, I really could use one of those. Mm. Or 10. All right, you lead the way. And I will uh, I will do that. I will uh, walk to where I know the entrance to the pathway to be, <clears throat> uh, present our box tickets, and uh, hopefully enjoy lots of free food and booze. As I am following Pike and the rest of the gang, I'm thinking about what Chuckles said about his dream. Not so much oh. in the sense that I am thinking about what he's going through, but I am trying to put the puzzle pieces together and saying nothing about my own dream experience and the trauma I've experienced in the last day or two. And then I catch up and we get led into a place, I assume. It is race time, folks. Racers, make your way to the starting line. Everyone who is here to enjoy the show, come on down. Fill up the seats. Butts in seats. It is the Grand Prix, the greatest show on earth. You do not want to miss out. 
Longtime champion Rex Maxim is racing against a crew of desirables. Everyone fighting for the crown. And you make your way uh, from the Rhapsody through the, through the garage up to the upper level where the pathway is and the massive stands. And you go around and you enter with a large crowd and they go in and they start to filter into section A, section B, section C, and you keep going to uh, the more elite section as you go up the boxes, right? And you move and you see there are people there taking tickets, getting everyone to where they're meant to be, helping you find your seats, right? And eventually you come across someone uh, who, what you get to the section for the boxes. Um, you come across uh, a person who is there, a similar four-armed creature, like Schlup Glitto, but not Schlup Glitto, but he's gonna sound exactly like him, um, <clears throat> is there, four arms, ready to take tickets. Hand me your tickets, please, and I'd be happy to direct you to your seats. I reveal all four electronic uh, tickets passes as I, uh, with one swift motion. He grabs the tickets. Rhett, you can enter. All right. Chuckles, you can enter. Thank you, my good man. And LaBouche, you can enter. Uh, not you. Excuse me? Yeah, you don't belong here. I got those tickets from the captain himself. No, that's not what this says. You don't belong here. What did it say? Uh, it's in this moment you hear uh, a panting uh, shout uh, as you see Doc running up from far away. Pike, Pike, what are you doing up here? What do you mean, what am I doing up here? The captain gave us four box tickets. I'm trying to enjoy the race. Well, I don't understand. Didn't you talk to him? I'm doing the boss. Hang on. <laughs> no, that was, I, you're so oh, that's that's close enough. Oh, I'm so old. Oh. Didn't you talk to him? I did talk to him, and he told me once the race was done that we had to get out of here. I don't understand. Did you talk to him since last night? No, I, I talked to him at the at the workshop. He told me to get lost, and I did. Look, look right down there on the race line. The captain himself came down to the garage. He didn't say a word to me, just stretched out his hand. But I knew what he wanted. I handed him a wrench, and he got to work on the sparrow himself. Look over there. What? <laughs> I look. <laughs> You look down at the race line with all of the ships and cars laid out on the starting line of the track. You see Rex's speeder uh, and him dressed in the medium gray with a dark black helmet on, all visibility cut off. Um, it's for our safety, you know, it is. <laughs> you see the Sparrow at the starting line in pristine condition. You see uh, which looks hand painted the number three on top of it. I will, uh, as, as you guys have gone into the box, I will look over this uh, ticket attendant and I will say, Well, boys, I guess I'll see you after the race. We'll see you in the winner's circle. Oh, damn it! Uh, I should have fucking installed it when I had the chance. What? The fucking ether core. All that work. work for nothing. All right. You know what, Pac? You don't need it. Look, I appreciate everything you've done. I'm sure you put her in top working condition, made the upgrades that she needed to, and, well, if the captain took a look at her, well, let's just say after this, I'll bet you want to compare notes. I mean, it does look... Like a, like, a, like a fine piece of work, and uh, I think it'll probably run better than it ever has. And you can tell even from this distance, Rhett, with your zoom-in eye and it, it, your general ability to just scan and understand engineering, uh, you, you don't just get a sense that this has been repaired beyond even its, its heightened form before, uh, but you 
you feel a great deal of a great deal of care went into this. Well, well, as an old wise man once said, if you ever run into any trouble out there, use the boost to get through. And if that doesn't work, try a somersault. And if all else fails, do a barrel roll. <laughs> I, I embrace I embrace <laughs> Rhett deeply. I take a long drag on the cigarette and I say, All right. I'll see you guys after the race. And I turn and I take <laughs> off. And you Good take luck, off. Pike. You got this! You head back down the way you came, running. Uh, you make your way to a place you know all too well, the locker room for the racers. You dive in and already hanging in uh, one of the lockers is your old race uniform. I you immediately take off my jacket <laughs> and I begin to change into my race uniform. One more cigarette for the road, and uh, I'm ready to go. I've got the racing gloves, I'm ready. And uh, I misspoke earlier. You, as you don your racing uniform, painted on the back is the number three. What's been painted on the top of the sparrow is the number seven. Oh! oh. Man, that would bring like a slight tear to my eye. Oh, um, mean, mean, mean. You would understand that to mean that he has anointed you as his champion's pick, and yeah, you're racing under his number. Seven oh. was previously his, was yeah. the, previously Leo's number. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, so then I don my number three, uh, and I, I rush out to the, uh, the hangar where the Sparrow would await, and hopefully also come. You... You have not seen the captain, okay. Leo Khan. All right. Uh, you don your racing uniform, you head out actually just onto the starting line as you walk out and you stand next to the Sparrow. Directly to your right is Rex Maxim Speeder and him standing right there, dressed in medium gray, black helmet on. See, There's sure a right palpable there. stench in the air. <laughs> it smells... A bit like uh, a, a smell not all too uh, dissimilar than the smell that hung in the air in your previous adventure in the hallway. <laughs> Some sort of mix of sulfur and Vinegar. rotten eggs. Oh, and no. oh, it is. Look, look, look! His complexion looks like old chewed bubble gum. That's amazing. Look! <laughs> The homeless people we gave his tickets to are entering his booth. <laughs> so, so dirty vagabonds who are drunk Sunday. and stumble oh, into Rex's shit. booth. This is so Teeth fun. missing, uh, skin pale. You can't actually see Rex's complexion, but you know that what you've said is 100% true. <laughs> that if you could see his complexion, it would look like chewed bubbles. Oh, yeah. oh God. I walk up to the Sparrow. Oh, and uh, I put a hand on her, and I see the seven, and like uh, I kind of just like touch the seven, and then I would uh, put one foot on on the ladder, and with a hop, skip, and a and one leg over, jump into the cockpit. And the racer's spirit ignites within you as you look out at the stands that surround you. You hear the cheering of the fans, and something that lay long dormant awakens again. Uh, the incline hill that people would normally climb up to walk to get some of the best view, you can see just at its tip stands a large, imposing figure. And with room right around them, a crowd has gathered, but clear space for respect around the person that stands at the head to watch the race. Uh, <clears throat> as you get into the Sparrow, We have an exciting announcement, folks! We haven't seen this matchup in decades. Rex Maxim, on his speeder, has taken to the starting line. And by his side, Pike. In the spell! And cheers a rough yeah. from the back. I didn't think I'd ever get to see this. 
shears the yeah. crowd goes wild. A clash of titans that many in the stands have never lived to see, but no one is cheering <clears throat> louder than the older generation who has caught it once before. Uh, as the two of you take the prime positions. <clears throat> well, I see you sent your clowns to disrupt the race. <laughs> I have to, like, stifle a smile before I respond with the communication and say, no. I don't have any idea what you're talking about, Rex. Why don't you take that mask off and show the crowd who you really are? Yeah, I bet you don't know what I'm... Uh, uh, <coughs> you all right over there, buddy? You better be focus fine. on the race. You just run a clean race, okay? <coughs> oh, Lubes, <laughs> our friend. I have a cocktail. You're like in your cups. <laughs> yeah. But it's just some cocktail. Yeah, you have exactly. Uh, you swirl the cocktail sauce back and forth. Uh, Labouche, I believe our friend Rex is not feeling his best. Oh, cheers. That's very funny. <laughs> oh, the shellfish. <laughs> I pull a mint julep out and I just keep it. <laughs> Cheers. Mm, cheers. <laughs> <sighs> well, I guess it's time to show you why I'm number one around here now. Please, Rex, you haven't been number one since before I left. A lot's changed, Pike. <clears throat> and as the race begins to kick off, the ships all rise into the air as the twin metal beams explode in each direction and this rainbow pathway creates and connects as this looping chaotic movement uh, extends all around creating this unbelievable uh, racetrack. The prismatic pathway reveals itself. Uh, the starting light sits above you, standing at red. You can see now, elevated in the air, the figure on the top of the hill. The captain, Leo Khan, looks on. I press the communications button. I say, win or lose, Rex. This is your last day of freedom, so you better enjoy it. You couldn't catch me before, and you won't catch me after this. <clears throat> Pike. Remember, just when you start to buck left and jump off the side of the race course so that you can fall onto the farther part along in the race course. It's a shortcut. Oh, yeah, right after the third turn. But don't miss. <laughs> Otherwise, you will lose if you miss. There's a weird turtly looking guy on a cloud with a fucking fishing rod that'll scoop you up, but you'll lose at least 15 seconds. Pike. <laughs> I miss my wife, Pike. <laughs> I take my I take my earpiece out and I set it down as soon as I hear chuckles. You put it on the dash. <laughs> you hit me in the <laughs> I missed my white click. Pike. <laughs> Keep the head straight. Keep the head straight. This uh, is my day. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> it is a beautiful night. Uh, the moon, it's not quite night, it's approaching night, it's like <laughs> midday into night. It's a beautiful night, more or less. The moon hangs okay. full in the sky above you, a beaming spotlight on your first race in decades. Uh, and as you sit there, engines revving, everyone on the line, you see, I almost said a Slytherin. What's the snake? Was the snake people? You want to slither in? You want to? You see a, a <laughs> but in this slither universe, universe, slither in is the correct yeah. 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 A slither in. You see a slither in uh, in a snake styled racer uh, that swirls around the track. Uh, you see a metallic horse of sorts. It doesn't look like it even has a racer. Uh, a prismatic horn erupts from its head. Damn. Uh, oh. You see all oh, manner man. of racers extend out across the starting line uh, as the race gets ready to go. Red light. Yellow light. 
as it hits green and everyone erupts off the starting line. Clearly, the difference is made note. The difference is noted immediately. You and Rex erupt off the line, leaving everyone else uh, markedly behind you. And I need you to roll a d6. Oh, sweet Jesus. He perfectly timed the A button. Gotta give it up. Off to a good start. Whoa. It's easy to miss. It's a very small window. It is. And if you hit it too late, you skid out. Five. Five. Oh no, it's been sabotaged. It was the bulb. <laughs> I knew that guy was a jackass. <laughs> you, Mike, watch out! You are blasting <laughs> neck and neck. Imagine spare just explodes and then I die and Mike is dead. Continue, sorry. You are blasting <laughs> neck and neck across the prismatic pathway. Yes, the rest. familiar curves as you, as you, the two of you weave neck and neck to and fro as you blast <sighs> over the, uh, over the technicolored highway. Uh, oh. As you're going, uh, you can see, you look over for just a moment, your, your uh, Rex just on your side. You can see him a little little strangely. He's riding the speeder, but he has to kind of like step up on yeah, him. Yeah, he's, he's not quite. It feels like he's not quite comfortable. He's standing yeah. up a little in, yeah, the, in the stirrups <laughs> as he's going. And uh, it's with that that he slows just a little, and you pull cleanly ahead. And I need you to roll another d6. Whoa. One. Mm -hmm. One. Not oh, good. No. Uh, you are racing. You've pulled clear ahead of him. And it's at this point uh, that two things spawn in front of the two of you. Uh oh. Uh, a green light appears in your pathway, and a red light appears in his. As you crash through them, uh, your guns are active, and you can fire in front of you or behind you. But his guns have activated as well. And roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, yeah, this guy's a jump. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, if I can fire on him, if that's like totally legal and good to go, I'm gonna fucking light his ass up. Uh, that's gonna be a good. 22 dexterity saving throw. A 22. With a 22. I do a barrel roll. With a 22, you see a red beam fire out from his speeder that arcs towards you, but you see it coming. You enact ace maneuvers and you roll on the field and you stay just ahead of him. And I need you to roll another d6. Now this is Pyak racing. <laughs> That's very funny. That's Another very funny. fucking one. Oh, Another one. Fun. Uh, you have dodged his attack, but the roll has yeah. slowed you just a little bit. Naturally. As Naturally. he pulls back neck and neck, you spin over a curve. You're you're pulling around the edge now as you race up, no longer flat on the ground. The two of you uh, horizontal against the track as it turns completely sideways, bringing you around the bed, Whoa. back to neck and neck. I need you to roll a d6. Can I twist these? <laughs> ha! A two. Oh. <clears throat> Start off so strong. It's in this moment that he, you hear the engines of the speeder rev just a little bit, and he's able to pull ahead of you slightly as you fall just behind. Yeah. Uh, you Come on. have a, uh, you have a, your guns have been active. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and should you choose to do so. You can make, uh, you can attempt to make an attack against his speeder. You would have to angle slightly to try and shoot him. God, I feel like I wouldn't fire on the guy. It just feels like it's fucking. Well, I think is it part of yeah, this is that, race? Is that it's part of the race? Oh, then I'm unloading yeah. on his ass. He's, he's an idiot. I'm gonna <laughs> just like he unloaded on his ass yeah. earlier. Uh, it's not, it's like kind of stunning shots and things like yeah, yeah. that. Um, I'm not shooting to kill. You, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Set to stun. Yeah, it's, all phases are set to stun. Do I need to make like an attack uh, roll or anything? You or make your just... attack roll. Okay. Yep. Uh, like based on my like plus eight or whatever it is. Yeah. You can add eight. Can I twist these? I don't need to. It's a twenty-five. Twenty-five lands your hit. 
as he moves ahead of you, very right. briefly and deftly, you swerve. The cannons at the front of the sparrow fire out a green blast as it collides with the side of his speeder. Uh, though you arc just a bit to make that shot, it allows you to zoom right past him as you pull Come ahead. Come on. Come on. Come on. And I need you to roll a d6. Come on, you Whoa. fucks. Please. Uh, Guys. Guys. A two. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's not looking good. He needs encouragement. I, I should have broke him? out my loaded d6s. <laughs> I'll, I'll, try, I'll try calling him. He didn't, a... he didn't respond to me. I think he turned off the communication. <laughs> you get nothing. Uh, days of thunder is too loud. <laughs> the days of thunder. When you hear the thing, no. you know what to do. It's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what you hear. Cringe. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy. You are tearing up the space track. Everyone uh, else in the race is almost a full lap behind you. Uh, it's clear why the two of you duel for the top spots. Uh, Rex, just slightly ahead of you now, moving just a little bit further. Top speed, just a bit higher than yours. Uh, and you're all another D6. I didn't want to look at it. I got three. We're moving up. We're moving up. It's about average. As you straight out on the on, on a straightaway on the pathway, uh, what spawns right ahead of you is a white light. Oh! And as you run into it, the sparrow erupts uh, from the space and boosts beyond him by a head. Oh! Uh, and I need you roll one more d6. Come on, motherfucker! He did it! We used the boost! Yeah, I used the right. boost! And now Come on. Go. What was the other advice you gave me? Try a somersault. <laughs> Try a somersault? That's gonna really send me by. Yep. Yeah. A one. Oh. A one. Yeah. Just, well, you know. No, <laughs> not now! Not now! Just, <laughs> I just I do this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I start going the wrong direction. You think you're playing SSX Tricky, and right. you, you're in the middle of the race for no good reason at all. You just pull a move. I do a kickflip. You, you do a kickflip to gain additional I points. Uh, and that Whoa. maneuver has brought you back head to head. Uh, <laughs> dead ahead of you, you see the finish line. The two of you moving head to head. This is just like Giuseppe Buggy 64! <laughs> Giuseppe <laughs> Buggy 60. That one I don't know. I got uh, it. That's like, yeah, I get it. I got it. The homeless people in Rex's. <laughs> oh. No. I can't. 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 I can this is the first time you have been on the prismatic pathway in decades. Mm -hmm. The spirit within you, long dormant, the spirit of the racer, has awoken once more. Mm. And not desiring, but knowing that you can beat Rex, you throttle the sparrow forward. And as you do, something ignites. And the sparrow erupts in burning flame, starting to tear up the track. As you move clearly ahead of him, the finish line. Oh, he's got some trick up his sleeve. The finish line in full sight. It is clear <laughs> that you are about to take the lead and win. It's at this point, roll a perception check at disadvantage. Yeah, so, sure. This is where I'm a Viking. Watch me get. I'm gonna get two absurdly high rolls here. Nope. Got a nine. Twist it. I can just re-roll the low, or just take whatever the lowest is after I re-roll. No, 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 no. Just so you get a full re-roll. That would be a uh, seventeen. With a seventeen. Or you just take if that's higher, you take that. With a 17, you start to notice the cheering of the crowd has changed. Those that are on the inclined precipice watching the race, you can see just out of the corner of your eye, it looks no longer that they're fixed on you. They're looking up. 
That's not good. <clears throat> I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Spike big numbers. I look up at the moon in uh, the sky. My low's a 14, which dex saving throw is like 22. Yeah, yeah. 22. Yeah. 22. That's no moon. <laughs> yeah. The flaming magenta light of the sparrow deftly pulls horizontally as you see something crashing down in front of you. Something dark strikes the prismatic pathway so hard that it splits the racetrack. It shatters the rainbow bridge before the finish line. You look, you careen as you attempt to regain control of the Sparrow. You straighten out, you've flown off the track at this point. You're flying freely in space and you're looking to get back. And what you see now looks like black rain falling from the sky. And as you look up, what you thought was a full moon hanging in the sky above you is not that at all. Roll. It looks very familiar. It makes no sense that it would be here. It's not even in the same sector of space. But Aurora hangs in the sky above you. The ice planet where you almost captured Rex. It's a Saurian super weapon. Smash cut to dinosaurs with like weird helmets like this and they're doing this. Psst. Psst. What starts crashing all around the prismatic pathway are horrible <clears throat> black oozing creatures that land all over. You would see this in the stands. Some of them might even be landing close to you as they crash into the ground. Some of them land on people. There's confusion at first. Like the first three shots that go out, nobody moves until the first person screams. A horrible, jagged, toothed monster with tentacles reaches out to the closest viewer, grabs them, pulls them in tightly, and consumes them deeply. Everyone shrieks, panic ensues, and everyone starts running. You see the captain, Leo Khan, bolt down the, down the pathway. You see him charge along the, along the now decline to get back down the hill. Creatures are crashing all around. Everyone that lands, he dives in, and with a death strike, he attempts to rend it. But they survive his claws, and they seem, as the slashes cut in, they seem to reform. As all this is happening, for a moment, you're back on the beach. You see the white web extend out in front of you, and the surface starts to bubble and rage, and you snap back. What are y'all doing? I... <clears throat> in my head and picturing that the booth that we're in is probably at the top <clears throat> of this like rim of the stadium looking down at the tracks mm -hmm. and that there's something of a distance before they're actually like stadium seatings going all the way down to the actual track track I'm trying to get a sense <clears throat> of if Labouche could push through the window how far he would need to drop in order to start to race towards the finish line or towards the place to intercept with Pike or the Sparrow to try and get to him as quickly as possible. How far would you have to drop, like, well, from I, where you I'm are to the ground? I'm trying to think through the steps. Like, what is the journey? <clears throat> is, it, is it even worth considering? Is it possible? He's out in space, isn't he? Oh, He's yeah. He's flying around in space. He's, I don't know. Yeah, he, well, so you would be able, if your goal was to get down onto the ground, uh, you would be able to probably run down the steps as quickly as possible to get to the ground level, but the track is elevated to the same, effectively, the okay. eye level of the box so, seats. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure that we were on the same page in terms of the dimensionality here. So it does not look like it would be easy for me. Not easy, but even, like, hard. It is impossible for me to get from here to where the Sparrow will end up. It would up. feel very much impossible for you okay. to get to the Sparrow. Okay. 
I would uh, immediately uh, make a call out to Rhett and, you know, from the Sparrow and basically be like, Rhett, Rhett, come in. Can you hear me, Rhett? Yeah. We got to get out of here. You guys have to get to the Rhapsody as quickly as possible. I don't know what's going on down there, but we have a serious problem. I don't know what the fuck that is. Is that a fucking planet? Is that the planet? We got to go right now. And I'll just start, like, knocking past people. And uh, maybe, maybe LaBouche will be... I mean, and it would be very easy for me to just, like, ram through. Yeah, let's like, get out of here. I would create a path easily for you. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm just swiping Fuck people. Rex. No matter what happens, he is not our priority anymore. Get off this place as quickly as you can. Yeah. What, what, is that the thing that was taken from the ice? Is that what's happening? Does it look similar? Oh. Hank, buddy. Fire up the engine. We gotta fucking go. Uh, and all we'll start running to the Rhapsody. <clears throat> you all start running to the Rhapsody. Uh, as you make your way through the stadium, uh, you see these black creatures, almost like oozing piranhas, as they swim through the air in front of you. Uh, you see them reach out. Uh, tentacle, oozing tentacles erupt from their bodies uh, as they uh, envelop onlookers and they consume them bit by bit. A furious <clears throat> hunger seemingly impossible to satiate. If, if they were dropping onto the pathway uh, and there was like no one like in the immediate vicinity, I would try to make some strafe runs to see if I could like light them up and like do any kind of damage that I could, provided there's like no innocent people around. If they're like already climbing into the stands and like consuming people, I wouldn't, I would not fire on them. I would say that you, they're climbing, they're, they're in all manner of stages. They're climbing into stands, they're consuming people. But if you would like to try, you can fly through the ones that are still falling, descending. Yeah, I would and absolutely. And you start peppering the sky. I would do what I could. Uh, with the sparrow to try to uh, lay down as much cover fire as I can from the ones that are raining down onto the tracks and onto the pathway. And if if the idea that all, everyone here is afraid of their self defenses does not fighting, are there like bouncers or like turrets or something that is just is, is also fighting them like enforcers that like we would have been avoiding? I presumably um, we wouldn't be fighting because there's some like crack team of special forces to show up, right? You do see uh, a crack team of those four armed creatures running around with all manner of cannons, kind of like bigger versions of Rex <clears throat> shotgun. Uh, oh. They're running around pumping, firing blasts into these creatures, and you see they're having moderate success. Oh. But this is an unending tide. Uh, these creatures are tearing through the pathway, and the bouncers are doing everything they can to simply slow them down. Damn. Uh, you'll see oh. as you start to pepper the skies and provide the time that you can to your friends, you'll see Rex's speeder leap off the track towards the captain's uh, hangar bay. Uh, the captain, as he runs down the decline, uh, is, is starting to turn around the edge. and He's clearly trying to make it back to his home. Uh, it's at that moment you'll see a large force descend directly down upon him right as he makes it to the door. Oh, no. And then you'll lose sight of him Fuck. in the black mass. You all are just making it back to the Rhapsody and your individual ships. You can get in them. You could get in them, move them back onto the Rhapsody. Uh, if I feel like we could get our ships back on the Rhapsody in a matter of minutes, I would probably do that. Yeah. I can get my ship onto the Rhapsody on me. So, like, I could fly it, but I'm basically just stomping into a, in a super suit and, like, walking into the hangar bay. And what? And the clown car did not take that much damage. It was damaged, but not like destroyed. So I could basically have my extendo arm kind of help drag and whatever. Like if there are any kind of not fully repaired ships. And I feel like oh, 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 telling oh. Hank that he might have already gotten started. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you can make a call into Hank and yeah. say, hey, like shit's going down. Um, the do crane what you can. arm grabs yeah. them and puts them in the hangar. 
do what you can to, to get him back. And as you're running, uh, a mass of these hideous monsters are chasing you. Oh, shit. And as you uh, break in to the garage way, uh, Hank has Rhett's vehicle, the hammerhead, uh, pointed directly at the mouth of the door uh, and says, bup, 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 uh, and you take it to understand, get down. Uh, oh, and get down! Uh, you all dive for the ground as Hank uh, unleashes a barrage from the hammerhead at the mouth of the door, uh, exploding these black masses onto the ground. Um, it looks effective at first. They're blasted, shattering droplets all over the, the ground. And it slows them down. But they begin to bubble and tremble and slowly move back towards each other. Oh, Red, what's your status? Uh, we're almost out. I'm doing what I can. It looks like Khan's home's been in, uh, completely enveloped by the, the ooze. I don't know what we can do for these people. I'll see you in one second. And I'm gonna rush up to the cockpit. And as soon as the ships are on and Labouche and Chuckles are on, I will, I will, basically fly out of the hangar and just try to sort of get a sense of like what the fuck is happening. Uh, you fly, everyone's ships get on. You're already in space. You're continuing to pepper these droplets as long as you can to hold back the tide. Um, you take into the Rhapsody and you spin around to look at what's happening. You see the horror unfold in front of you. Aurora, no business being here. Black veiny cracks Same. run the length of the planet as these droplets clearly Jeez. emanating from it. Uh, whatever this is, uh, hungers and it falls. As this is happening, I am thinking of the dream that I've been happening, having. And I'm thinking about the experience that I had on Aurora. And I'm wondering... Does Labouche put any of those pieces together? Does the nature of these shadowy creatures feel connected to the thing the Weaver suppressed at all? Do I feel like I can be unlocking some sort of a, a power or a communication or anything at all would be passing through Labouche's mind as he holds on to the interior of the hangar bay and Rhett pilots us away, and I watch as the raceway and everything starts to shrink away from me. You, as you look upon this, you feel deeply a resonance. Could almost be described as a kinship. You see the white webbing in your mind stretch out in front of you like a locked door, and something knocks. And you feel that in every piece of your body. Can I hunger open the door. <laughs> oh god. <clears throat> Is there a, a peephole on the door? <clears throat> oh. You can try. I think I think that seeing this and hearing everything that's going on on I would only try if I felt like it could help. Like if it was going to give me some ability to convey information, like unlocking knowledge, or if it was gonna give me some way to defend better against this serious threat that is assaulting down, that is coming down on this area. You put your hands on top of the web that covers what could only be described as an ocean in front of you. You try to lift at its edge. You can almost feel the same sensation of the hunger of what lives within you. You grapple with it, but before you can make the decision to pull on the thread, Pike, you hear over your comms, <clears throat> A call comes in. At first, you just hear shotgun blasts. And 
revolver fire as laser blasts fire out. Fight! You have to get out of here. We don't know what's happening. Something terrible is coming down. I'm not just going to leave if there's anything I can do to help. I'm not going to leave again. I don't know what we can do. But I know one thing. I think I got one race left in me. And you hear a very familiar call. Yes! You hear the roar of the Atlas. Were to life. It sounds like the mighty cry of a lion. As the garage of uh, the captain explodes in a brilliant blast of light. The Atlas takes off into the sky. It's a yellow sheen, uh, undriven in years, but in pristine condition. The number seven sits on its side. Watching him fly is like watching a leaf dance through the rain, untouched by water, as he takes off and what flies directly at Aurora. And that is where we'll end the session. Oh my god! Oh, oh, Mace! Fuck, he's dead. <laughs>